What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my second channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels, and with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Two long years had passed since the end of the Unification Wars two years since the lands of the Western Continent were united under a single ruler since the time of the Six Paths Sage thus leading the people into an era of prosperity and peace the city of Kimen also known as the Imperial Capital located 20 miles inland from the Western Sea and accessible from the Kimen River which snaked its way halfway through the Northern Continent ending at its namesake the Imperial Capital also served as a hub for trade as did South Ichiyama in the southern region the nerve center of the unified west was the imperial complex located at the heart of Cuman City which served as the imperial capital the two-mile complex sat on on top of a small hill and was heavily fortified as it once belonged to the late Kimen warlord Rokinbongi Oda now it served as the center of the unified west spanning two miles the four-story imperial palace which served as the residence of the emperor the top two floors were reserved for the emperor while the bottom two floors were for their guests aside from the imperial palace was the hall of sovereigns of which the emperor the empress and their 16-member imperial council ate from the empire's high-ranking samurai and shinobi clans and eight civilians and nobility who were the elected representatives of the people met three times a week to conduct and manage the government the house of sovereigns also contained his throne room where the royal couple would usually received their guests seated on their thrones as well as their joint office speaking of the emperor he was inside his office taking on his greatest foe yet a foe so devious so cunning that it almost made him wish that he was fighting his former cell the Akatsuki the legendary Sanin and Haruzen Sarutobi at once a foe so cold and ruthless that even Orochimaru would be sent screaming in terror from its presence that foe was paperwork house of sovereign's office of the emperor and empress consort ag I should have known this job had a catch to it honestly I don't see how my old man could have done this leading an army into battle was much easier the emperor of the unified west sat behind his desk going through the mountain of paperwork grumbling under his breath about how his wife was able to escape from the abomination of paperwork while he was stuck with it and of the unfairness of it all 18 years old he had came a long way since his days as a Kanaha the Kur Jenin he was no longer the loudmouth orange loving ramen consuming knucklehead who screamed that he would be okage one day the years he had spent in the west had changed him forged in the fires of war trained in the ways of the shinobi and the samurai standing at six feet tall with a wiry muscular frame the face a spitting image of his father the whisker like marks on his face a sign of him being a jinchuriki were gone as blonde hair had taken on a reddish hue a sign that he was a vuzumaki blood the facial stubble on his face also the same color blue eyes showed intelligence combined with ruthlessness when needed be his style of clothing also changed as well no more did he wore orange which screamed kill me instead he took to wearing mostly black since it can go with anything the emperor dressed simply as it had reflected on his childhood a white shirt with a tight collar and the sleeves rolled to his elbows black vest pants and boots his long coat remained on the hanger while his black Kage style hat hanged alongside the long coat the hat was mostly used to conceal his identity mostly when he traveled abroad which was often the emperor of the unified western empire Naruto Uzumaki Namake's side screw this he muttered making a cross with his hands he channeled his chakra and uttered the words Kagebushin in a poof of smoke five shadow clones appeared Naruto rose from his seat and retrieved his long coat finish up the paperwork I'm going for a walk yes boss the clones Acknowledged as they got to work long coat fluttering in the breeze Naruto walked down the halls of the House of Sovereign Servants bowed to him as he passed to which Naruto responded with a nod of the head as it was past noon there was one place where his wife could be. The palace gardens rounding the corner he ran into his senior advisor a tall walking mountain of muscle tan with bleach blonde hair and the mustache to match his attire eight with the imperial insignia the four symbol seal was. Wrapped around one massive bicep Naruto greeted the older man afternoon a the former rakage of Kumo turned advisor grunted chief how did the rakage of Kumo ended up in the west and as Naruto's senior advisor one year earlier I was overthrown by Orochimaru who had placed a puppet ruler and has placed the first order of the new rakage. Eliminate his predecessor and his brother Killer B however as emperor of the west Naruto had a robust spy network in the east and it was through them that. 
Naruto was notified of the coup while visiting Gara and Suno with Hinata at his side and the aid of his elite guard as personal bodyguards and the use of the demon's gate jutsu Naruto arrived at the nick of time and slaughtered the Kumo ANBU thus saving A and B's lives and those of A's loyal supporters imagine their shock upon returning to Suna that the emperor was the former QB Jinchuriki even A and B had heard about the exploits about the one who unified the lands under a single Banner it was then that Naruto offered A and B political asylum within the Empire A and B accepted Naruto's offer with as serving as senior advisor to the young emperor while B hung around the trading post of Rara located 30 miles from Kuman dodging your duties once again Chief A asked dryly duties have you seen the mountain of paperwork on my desk Naruto shot back a shuddered, don't remind me I've had my share of doing paperwork when I was the rakage whoever came up with paperwork needs to be strung up Naruto chuckled on that I agree I left a couple of shadow clones to finish up I received word from food that several clans from Kanahagakur have defected from the village is that true Naruto nodded Fu the Jinchuriki for Chome the seven-tailed beetle was part of the United West's information network anything Kanoha related was sent her way and in turn was delivered to either Naruto his wife or the nine tails herself four clans plus 90 Jounin level shinobi they should be Arriving within the week, can you trust the Hyuga and the Inoshika Cho? I can see you have your concerns and Naruto replied the Inoshika Cho first generation were childhood friends with my father and unlike my former teammates their children never saw me as the fox as for the Hyuga aside the fact that they hate the Uchiha with a passion and Ada's mother was close friends with my own mother and Hayashi. Saw her as an equal despite Sarutobi's efforts and stunting my growth in order to turn me into a weapon those four men looked out for me in their own way honoring a promise made to them by my parents and nodded knowing of naruto's treatment as the village pariah solely because he held the most powerful of the tailed beasts not even b and yujito were treated as harshly in his mind the people of kanoa were total idiots favoring a traitor over a hero in the aftermath of the uchiha retrieval mission once it became known as to what had happened through gara and suna public opinion regarding Kanoha had plummeted in the end despite all of its posturing and its supposed will of fire Kanahagakura no Sato was known as the village who rewards traitors for the fire Demio Tsunade and Jiraiya their name was synonymous with the words hypocrite and backstabber and for Sasuke Uchiha his name was synonymous with traitor it was through his intelligence network posing as merchants from the Pakura merchant house that Naruto had found out that the Kanahagakura high council not only promoted Sasuke to Jounin but also activated the C. Arahayashi Hyuga and Inoichi Yamanaka objected to having their daughters marry the Uchiha when Tsunade threatened to strip them of clan status and revoke their shinobi registrations Hayashi and Inoichi retaliated by turning in their Itai Atesh and storming out of the council chamber Shikaku and Chuza. Soon followed turning in their Atai Atesh as well throwing in their lot with the Hyuga and their longtime friend unknown to Tsunade and the other pro Uchiha members of the council Hayashi had been in contact with the Imperial spies and had gotten word to Inada after talking it over with Naruto he had agreed to allow the Hyuga and anyone defecting from Kanoha political asylum those four and their families looked out for me back in Kanoha Naruto continued their children did not see me as a Demon growing up and Lord Namakaze always pays back his debts A concluded the young emperor nodded plus Kanoa's reputation had already taken a serious hit when they banished me and favored the Uchiha with the loss of four major clans the village will be crippled even further you know Kanoha won't take this lying down as said they already did Naruto replied as you probably know the unified west and yours truly are quite the hot topic in the east they know of my exploits and of my strength which is even greater than the legendary Sanin combined if Kanoha attacked the defecting clans who were traveling with the Pekora merchants on the way to the coast and nodded an understanding it would set off an international incident and would make Kanoha lose face attacking an unarmed convoy impressive chief Naruto grinned thank you if you need me I will be at the gardens a smirked as he nodded knowingly before walking off in the opposite direction imperial complex palace gardens the palace gardens was the favorite spot of the Empress Consort of the United West her husband had built it for her obtaining various rare flowers from East and West located at the back of the complex Naruto had it done for Inada as a wedding gift seeing as how his wife loved flowers Kim and had several gardens and parks but this was for the Emperor's personal use seated under one of the trees was the Empress Consort of the West she was reading a romance novel under the shade of the trees enjoying the spring day 
she was the same age as her husband her hair once long during the unification wars was now cut short again she was taller than she was back when they were both Kanoa Jenin standing at 5 feet 7 several months younger than he was her pupil less lavender eyes identifying her as one of the Hyuga she was dressed in her standard medic mean uniform which was a black shinobi shizoku a type of dark colored training dogi for shinobi with a crimson lotus decal on the left breast underneath the Shizoku was a fishnet shirt a black gown and flak vest completed the outfit like her husband and Ada Hyuga now and Ada Namikaze had came a long way since Kanoa when the Uchiha was pardoned and Naruto was banished and Ada was sent along with him by her father in order to keep the Hyuga council. From branding her with the caged bird seal in the years following her exile she too had been forged in the fires of war having become Naruto's second in command she was also the founder of the medic ninja program used during the war which was one of the major factors in Naruto winning the unification wars while she ran the program her second in command was a clansman from Naruto's clan Karen Uzumaki the medic ninja program produced top-notch medic ninjas who were later assigned to various parts of the empire Karen was also a former Odogekir Kunoichi who had defected from Orochimaru because of his inhumane experiments on the sick and his quest for immortality aside from being a highly skilled Medicanada was also trained in the assassination arts by Yujito Ni as well as political intrigue by the elderly Sancher she was known to the soldiers and to the people as the lady and princess of foxes given as she was the third Kitsun Sanin she continued to read her novel as she felt her husband's presence behind her she had gotten better at detecting his chakra signature. How is it that you can sneak away from your duties at the hospital while I have to use shadow clones to get away from? The mountain of paperwork left on my desk Hanada closed her book and looked up at her husband who was leaning up against a nearby tree Karen took over for me at the hospital Hanada replied rising to her feet unlike the wives of the Demios in the east Hanada had an active role as the empress of the imperial nation as head of the imperial medic corps which was one of the major reasons she was respected by the shinobi and samurai of course she was not exempt from the horror that was paperwork. Naruto walked over to her really he asked slipping his arms around his wife's waist smiling broadly really Hinata replied returning the smile I missed you she added wrapping her arms around his waist she had to go to the hospital early for a meeting with Karen and Kokoro Yamada leaving Naruto in bed alone the moment however was ruined with the arrival of one of the Kunoichi who was part of the Hellcats commanded by former Kumo Kunoichi and Jinchiriki Yujito Ni the Hellcats was one of several Elite Special Forces units under Naruto and Anata's command the Hellcats were all female consisting of both Kunoichi and Anabugeisha and identified by their khaki flak vests both Naruto and Anata were former understudies of Yujito as she had taught the both of them assassination techniques which came in handy during the Unification Wars Chief Lady Anata Naruto frowned while Anata giggled releasing Anata he turned to face the kneeling Hellcat who had arrived via Shunshin he recognized her as Yujito's second in command yes Kumi what is it he asked annoyed that his Hinata time was interrupted forgive me for interrupting but I bring word from General Ni herself the Hellcat replied there is an five man envoy from the east en route to the complex General Ni has identified them as Shinobi from Odogekir no Sato Naruto's frown deepened who is leading them Hinata asked General Ni has identified them as the sound for and the leader of the envoy is Kabuto Yakushi they should be Arriving within 5 minutes Naruto nodded give my thanks to Yujito make sure they are discreetly tailed to the complex sir with that the Hellcat vanished Naruto sighed guess I'll have to take a rain check for this he said no rest for the wicked I'm afraid remain here since your eyes are a dead giveaway okay okay house of sovereigns throne room seated on his throne Renegan activated Naruto at the white haired man with a combination of disdain and suspicion Karama was not there as he did not want her to give away any suspicion as to her true identity the Kage style hat was on his head effectively hiding his face not to take any chances his face was concealed by his mask unlike the Kage hats of the east the imperial version was solid black the cloth still white unknown to Kabuto Yakushi this had not been the first time that Naruto and Inada had a run-in with the cunning shinobi six months earlier while inspecting the Pekora merchant house's wind outpost near the wind fire border Kabuto had been ordered by Orochimaru to check the place out having heard about the rise of the Western Empire and its leaders what Kabuto found was the commander of Naruto's elite guards Major Benisato Mochizuki known as the Snake Queen of Kim and Kabuto had been soundly defeated by the older woman then Orochimaru had appeared the Snake Queen fought the Snake Sanin while Naruto and Inada 
watched from the sidelines Benisato having been warned in advance of Orochimaru's methods, but it wasn't necessary as Benisato had been more skilled than Orochimaru the snake Sanin had been forced to retreat the white-haired bespectacled Odo Shinobi took a knee head bowed your imperial majesty he began may your reign be a long and prosperous one my name is Kabuto Yakushi I represent Odo Gekyur the village hidden in the sound I bring greetings from my master lord Orochimaru using his chakra to disguise his voice Naruto responded so what business does your master want with me lord Orochimaru has been monitoring the events that have transpired here in the west with great interest Kabuto said he is especially impressed that you have united the lands in so little time he has sent me here to discuss terms of an alliance between your empire and the sound Naruto learned back on his throne. Tell me Yakushi what would I gain should I ally myself to the sound you would have the backing of one of the most powerful ninja in the east Kabuto said despite our small numbers you would mostly benefit from Lord Orochimaru's guidance in other words take over my body since Sasuke is off limits and use my army to invade Kanoa Naruto thought darkly the young emperor made it look like he was in deep thought I am sorry but a military alliance is not in the empire's best interest you misunderstood. Me your majesty Kabuto began but was cut off oh don't be Koyakushi Naruto replied do you really think that you are the first from the east to ask for an alliance first it was the rock then it was the cloud you make number three the people has seen war since the era of my great ancestor the six paths sage Kabuto's eyes went wide you're a descendant of the six paths himself I thought only the Senju and the Uchiha were his only descendants Naruto chuckled dryly no the six paths had only one child a daughter who was the founder of my clan the two brothers who would later found the Uchiha and Senju lines trained under him nothing more when the six paths died they changed their lineage to make it so that they were his progeny and tried to murder his daughter despite the Senju founder wielding the Mokutan and the Uchiha wielding the Sharingan they were no match for the Rinnegan's power and were beaten after that incident she fled here it was a half truth actually the Uzumaki clan Ancestor did not flee to the west, but instead settled in what was to be known as Whirlpool Country but we are getting off subject Naruto continued the people has seen war since the era of the six paths, unlike the people of the east they have not known a lasting peace I saw the lawlessness of the lands, and I gave them the peace they desired I am merely a servant of the people, and even an emperor must listen to the will of the people I am truly sorry that you have come this far, but tell your lord. Orochimaru that my answer is no Kabuto slowly nodded I see in any case Lord Orochimaru will be disappointed that you will not agree to the alliance I thank you for your time your majesty with a wave of his hand Naruto excused Kabuto as soon as the sound envoy left the room Naruto summoned the commander of shadow company Kazuma emerging from the shadows as if it was water was the head of the Kazuma clan and commander of the appropriately named shadow company a bald wiry man in his early 50s. Hideo Kazuma was the first to swear loyalty when Naruto had killed Rokabunji Oda the Kazuma clan were masters of a rare bloodline called Shadow Release which allowed them to cover major distances by using the shadows of various objects you called Chief Kazuma asked have your men tail Yakushi and the Oto envoy Naruto ordered removing his mask and returning to his normal voice make sure that they are on the first boat out of Kimen. I don't trust him or the snake between the snake and Kanoha I hate. Orochimaru more see to your orders Kazuma Kazuma bowed right away my lord as Kazuma sank back into the shadows Naruto frowned Orochimaru was taking an interest in the empire and even though the snake loving pedophile was on the back burner he was a legitimate threat no way am I letting the snake destroy Kanoa Naruto thought as he deactivated his Rinnegan and removed the hat and mask that responsibility falls onto me looking at his watch he mentally cursed to himself damn thought I had more time before the meeting with the council oh well imperial council chambers minutes later the council hall inside the hall of sovereigns was as big as the council chambers back inside Kanoha the council chambers consisted of three long tables the first containing the seats of the emperor the empress consort and their advisors two tables located on either side of the emperor's table faced each other each containing six seats for either side the council was chosen by Naruto and Hinata personally to serve as ministers of their respective fields the meeting was straightforward aside from a uprising of malcontents loyal to Oda which was quickly crushed before it could gain steam and the financial situation concerning the southern badlands there was nothing worthy to report good thing that they only met three times a month at the lead table Naruto and Inada sat side by side next to Inada was A and Kurama. In her human form next to Naruto was the patriarch of the Uzumaki clan Takuma. 
Uzumaki as the Uzumaki clan was famous for their Fuenjutsu Takuma was his uncle as Kushina was his older sister unlike Kushina and her son who both wielded the Rinnegan Takuma was a Fuenjutsu master he was also known as the maelstrom of Whirlpool given both his natural fighting abilities as well as his short temper when Whirlpool had fallen in the last Shinobi War Kushina despite being Minato's wife did not fully trust Kanaha the Kur and had ordered her brother to flee elsewhere taking five. Hundred Yuzushiogakir Shinobi with him half of them being Uzumaki clansmen Takuma fled to the west and had set up shop in the northern continent upon hearing of a rising warlord with the same surname as his own Takuma sought him out and found out that the warlord in question was his own nephew after hearing Naruto and Inada story from his time in Kanoha up to being the scapegoat for the Uchiha's attempted defection, which led to his defection Takuma was furious but in the end Naruto had gained family and more importantly allies to his cause when the West was united under Naruto's rule he had been the first to accept a position of senior advisor to the emperor and empress consort alongside Kurama like the shinobi in both the East and West the samurai also had their own ranking system an apprentice samurai was the same as a shinobi in training and received instruction from the academy the imperial schools were up and coming shinobi and samurai learned how to fight the largest of the schools were in the imperial capital Karata Port South Ichiyama and Tears Point once the amateur samurai passed a series of physical and mental exams they became Anisebushi amateur samurai it was the shinobi equivalent of genin unlike the shinobi system the Anisebushi would be assigned to either a three-man cell or apprentice to an elder samurai after two years the Anisebushi were eligible to be promoted to Chukinbushi middle samurai the Chukinbushi is the most common rank of samurai and was the shinobi equivalent of chunin they were the foot soldiers and archers the main bulk of the samurai forces under naruto's command it is there that the chukinbushi had to prove their worth last was the sayabushi elite samurai the samurai equivalent of jounin they are the highly skilled samurai a position that would take most of their lives to obtain the sayabushi were mainly the officers of the imperial military people who both the samurai and naruto had fought alongside with entrusted with their lives some of the Sayabushi were clan heads others were not the Sayabushi were the ones who took on a single apprentice or a cell of their choosing they were highly respected by both shinobi and samurai naruto himself was of this rank on naruto's left sancher the elder samurai warrior and philosopher who had taught naruto the ways of the samurai in most cases he was a lot like danzu shimura warhawk only difference was that he fought wars to defend his homeland not to expand his influence he was also the minister of defense a powerful samurai even to this very day he held the rank of koden bushi the legendary samurai in his younger days as naruto and Hinata had later found out he had traveled in the east defeating haruzen sarutobi hanzo the salamander and even the sanin during the unification war he had invited naruto to his village and naruto became so impressed with the old man that he asked to be trained in the ways of the samurai when the empire was created he was the first that Naruto had invited to be on the council despite his old age Suncher was well respected by samurai and ninja like his granddaughter Sana Suncher who was a member of Yujito's Hellcats served as part of Naruto's elite guards he was also the only person who could still kick Naruto's ass six falls out of ten next was Eiji Kibagami also from a respected samurai clan with connections in iron country as he had family there which was helpful when Naruto negotiated a trade agreement between the empire and iron a hard punching hard drinking samurai with a mouth that would make Taiyuya blush and Hayden green with envy he was the first to join up with Naruto in his ambition he was a Saizibushi level shinobi who served as the minister of samurai affairs despite being a foul-mouthed samurai he was fiercely loyal to the young emperor honorable and carried himself as a true samurai it was also a known fact that he and Kasumi Ehara were romantically involved his pet wolf Bijumaru was at his side like Suncher Eiji had a member of his family as part of the elite guard his nephew Hideo Kibagami served proudly next to Kibagami was the the head of the Chiba clan Kuda Chiba Jounin who served as minister of shinobi affairs the Chiba clan was a line of ninja who practiced a deadlier style of taijutsu that would put even Rock Lee and Mado Guy to shame the taijutsu used originally as an assassination technique like Sunchi's granddaughter and Eiji's son her eldest son Takashi served as one of Naruto's elite guards a high honor for the Chiba clan in most ways the Chiba clan reminded Naruto of the Inazuka fiercely loyal to the pack sitting next to Kudo was her childhood friend and fellow ninja Kokoro Yamada the eldest daughter of a former nobleman and
A missed refugee she was the diametric opposite of Zabuza's partner Haku as her attacks were fire release attacks A Tokabetsu John and Shinobi she was the Minister of Health having been picked for the decision by Anata herself in an interesting side note her bloodline allows her to endure an opponent's fire attacks and scathe the Yamada clan also had a reputation for being top-notch healers whose skill rivaled that of Tsunade, in her prime next to the fire-wielding mistress was the regal Kasumi. Ahara she was a Saizibushi level samurai who served as minister of the interior the Ahara was the most powerful samurai clan in the southern region and aside from the elderly Sancher who resided on the northern continent was one of Naruto's major supporters Kasumi herself was a legendary warrior in her own right having led troops into battle despite being in her 40s she looked younger. When her husband was killed by Oda's hand he was about to claim Ahara for his own thankfully Naruto's. Arrival put a stop to those plans her best friend Murasaki Shibaku was a popular author of romance novels and poetry Anata being her biggest fan it was also gaining prominence over Jiraiya's Ika Ika series in the east seated next to Ahara was the head of the Okajima ninja clan Hei 8 Okajima nicknamed the Tengu because of his habit of wearing a Tengu mask to battle the Okajima clan were skilled in ninjutsu assassination techniques and recon they were the natural rivals of the Shanta clan who favored open combat over covert assassinations Naruto had approached the Okajima clan head for an alliance Hei 8 was impressed by the boy's bravado and tenacity that he signed on to Naruto's side once the war was over Naruto had returned to the Okajima clan their lands which were taken from them by one of the more corrupt demios in return the entire Okajima clan swore their eternal loyalty to their new emperor. On Anata's right, Ruji Shinzen and his wife Aruka Shinzen the heads of the Western Empire's premier mercantile guild Pekora Merchant House and co-ministers of finance Ruji was originally a mercenary ninja while Haruka had a gift for business and management they were the first to back Naruto in his ambition financially following the death of Rokabunji Oda when the unification wars had reached its conclusion they created the merchant houses which had two purposes, providing imported and exported items across the empire and in the east while at the same time keeping a close eye on the more unruly villages in the east thanks to Naruto they now had branches all over the country as well as several locations in the east some of which served for gathering intel as an IWA fire country and Kumo next was Shinoda Wakaba former pirate captain now a close business partner and longtime friend with the Shinzans since his 10 boat fleet was originally used to harass and plunder both Odas and his allies supplies it was Haruka who had pointed out the perks in having a fleet of ships backing up his ambition to Naruto now with the war over the fleet was now used to transport goods all over the continent as well as in the elemental countries in an interesting side note the Shinzans and Wakaba were both in law since the Shinzans son had married Wakaba's daughter which had brought their families into a close alliance seated next to Wakaba was Katsumoto Kanahara a Demio from the southern region who supported the people and working class he was overthrown by a power mad warlord and condemned to wander the lands until Naruto found him he was one of the key members in the civilian council in which thanks to Katsumoto that his major support base was the civilians themselves Katsumoto's lands were restored unto him as well as his title as a reward for his service and loyalty given his passion for justice it was fitting that he served as minster of that post next to Wakaba, with Shin Akazuki his home was the southern part of the continent Shin was the youngest of the council at age 23 and trained as a samurai having been recently promoted to Saizibushi the son of Shinji Akazuki a retired warlord who had fought with Naruto Shin had made a name for himself during the unification wars as a formidable swordsman and can hold his own against Naruto in their occasional spars in some cases he reminded Naruto of Shikamaru at times. Brilliant but lazy last was Rumika to do like Katsumoto she was a demio but hailed from the norths mountainous larger region to do was one of the demios whose land the late Roken Bungi Oda had an eye for since her lands contained iron mines deep within the mountains but once Naruto had eliminated him she saw the wise decision in backing him in his war of conquest her husband was the original demio until his death during a raiding party from Oda's men forcing her to assume the role. But despite this she was fiercely loyal to both her people and to the emperors Abuza Mamachi and Haku were also 
sitting in at the Emperor's request thought to have died in Wave Country in Naruto's first mission the former Mist Swordsman and his partner had instead fled the country as Mist Hunter Ninjas had arrived forcing the pair to leave high-powered blood clones in their places Zabuza and Haku had fled to the west where they had hooked up with bloodline refugees who had fled the purges under Yagura and the Mist Demiyo, when Naruto had arrived on the southern continent with his forces two years earlier. Zabuza had already made a name for himself as a powerful warlord with Haku as his second in command it was Haku who had discovered that Naruto was the warlord who had united the northern continent under his rule Zabuza was surprised to say the least the little blonde runt who had faced him down on Tazuna's bridge all those years ago had unified the northern continent, what surprised him even more was that Kanoha had betrayed him in favor of his traitorous teammate despite the fact that he was. Mostly a bloodthirsty sadist Zabuza had a set of morals he decided to join Naruto under one condition, that he would be the one to kill Kakashi Ataki Naruto agreed on the condition that he alone would beat the holy hell out of him first before Zabuza killed him that Zabuza agreed to Zabuza was not only in command of his own unit known as the Demon Brigade but he also served as the chief interrogator in the Empire's interrogation division he also taught Naruto Mist style swordsmanship which came in handy in his war of conquest Suncher cleared his throat before we adjourn this meeting chief is there anything else you would like to add yes Naruto replied as you might or might now know my wife and I have been in contact with the four clans who have defected from Kanahagakura no Sato, the Hyuga the Yamanaka the Akamichi and the Nara aside from the four clans and their heirs accompanying them are 200 Jounin one of which you might be interested in Zabuza his name is Ibiki Marino Zabuza recognized the name Ibiki yes I know of his reputation said to be the best in interrogation and torture who is he A.G. Kibagami asked he is a Tokabetsu Jounin Anata explained some would describe him as a sadist oh sounds like someone you would like Mamachi A.G. snorted ignoring the sour look Zabuza had given him please continue Lady Hinata his interrogation techniques are stuff of legend Hinata continued even when Naruto and I were coming up in the Shinobi Academy Ibiki was someone to be feared he has the unique ability to cause great pain and suffering without resorting to physical torture his interrogation skills rely mostly on the ability to torture the mind his knowledge on human psychology is top notch Ibiki is a firm believer of gaining control over a person's spirit by attacking the mind that much is true Zabuza said you can say that I am an admirer of his work back in my seven swordsman days Kisame had chosen to kill off the shinobi belonging to Mist's cipher division rather than allow them to fall into his hands charming fellow Kasumi Ehara dryly noted Ibiki works with Anko Midarashi Inada continued she is a tokabetsu jounin like Ibiki a former student of Orochimaru she is a master of interrogation who uses snakes just like her former master she also loves Dango and is a total sadist what about the clan heads ag asked the four clan heads were friends with my parents naruto said they nor their children did not see me as a demon unlike the rest of kanoha despite the efforts of sarutobi and the kanoha council to stunt my growth as a warrior they looked out for me in their own way the first clan head is hayashi Hyuga. you already know of the Baikogen and its advantages and weaknesses as well as the caged bird seal the other three clan are known for their Teamwork Kanata continued the Yamanaka, the Akamichi, and the Nara clans better known by their team name the Inoshika Cho Trio ever since Kanoa's founding there always has been a team with that title as they are famous for their teamwork first up is Ibiki's partner Inoichi Yamanaka intelligence specialist with the unique talent which is their clan's signature ability which is Kudachiba asked the Yamanaka, has the ability to read the opponent's minds and search their memories Hanada said there. Signature technique is the mind-body switch technique in which the Yamanaka can send their mind into a target's body overriding the target's mind for a short period of time he has a daughter Eno who is a former teammate of ours the mind-body switch is just one of the many techniques the Yamanaka has at their disposal his wife Koji Yamanaka used to own the flower shop in town second is the Nara Naruto said the Nara are known for their high intellect and battle tactics they are also known for Attracting hot-headed women low energy and saying troublesome the Nara's specialty is shadow manipulation the Nara's signature technique is the shadow imitation technique in which they can extend their shadow and merge with their target's own shadow forcing the other to imitate the Nara's movements Shikaku Nara is the clan head back in Kanoha he was the Jounin commander. Given his mastery of battle tactics he also herds deer in his spare time and is a natural herbalist Shikamaru Nara is his son. 
Last is the Akamichi Hinata finished the Akamichi are the powerhouse of the trio possessing great physical strength and can convert their calories into chakra the downside to this is that their techniques drain their chakra while in use and maintaining them during battle can be tiring for this reason the Akamichi have very high chakra levels and for this reason has to eat a lot in order to maintain those levels Chuza Akamichi is the 15th head of the clan while Chuji Akamichi is his son. Like I said earlier Naruto said these four clan heads had done their best to aid me despite Sarutobi's orders not to do so they offered me shelter food and in some cases a place to sleep their children did not see me as Kurama in human flesh it is because of this that Hinata and I are going to grant them political asylum into the empire they should be arriving by the end of the week by ship forgive me for being the voice of opposition chief Kokoro Yamada cut in but you grant the clan's asylum. And then what automatic clan status right off the bat Naruto shook his head of course not Kokoro just as Hinata and I had to work hard to get where we are they will not be given a free pass they will be on probation for 6 months when they prove their worth to the unified west when they show their loyalty to the empire and her people only then will we accept them as one of the great imperial clans of the imperial nation, is that reasonable enough for all of you the council nodded there. Emperor's conditions were acceptable it was then Eiji raised one hand chief if I was the Hokage there would be no way that I would let four clans of such power leave the village are you not worried that Kanoa might try something funny I've already taken precautions in case the cripple or the hag decide to send out assassination squads on the refugees Naruto replied you are aware that the Pekora merchant house has branches in the east particular, in wave spring and water right yes the refugees had met up with one of the caravans who are on the way to the coast where the bridge once stood and you know as well as I do that most of the merchants are some of the best shinobi and samurai veterans who had the honor of fighting by our side Eiji nodded in understanding since you were an unknown to Kanoha and fire country attacking the refugees while being escorted to the coast by our caravans not only would cause Kanoha to lose face with the villages who are known to us but it also gives us a valid reason to go to Kanoa and put Blade and Jutsu to asses he cackled chief you were always such a sneaky little shit glad to see you still have the touch coming from you I'll take that as a compliment Naruto replied used to the older samurai's foul mouth tendencies this coming from the same guy that came up with a thoughtful albeit crude description about his wife's demeanor the only thing bigger than her tits is her heart of course he said that within earshot of Kasumi and the other female members of the council which earned him a one-way trip to the hospital he would be in a body cast for the rest of the month is there anything else Hinata asked the council shook their heads in the negative Naruto nodded this meeting is adjourned time skip one week later the two Pekora cargo ships each bearing the flag of the unified western empire the black four symbol seal on a red background sailed past Karata port and headed inland only this time the ships did not carry goods from the East these cargo ships carried refugees it had been a week since what would be known throughout the elemental countries as the Kanoa Exodus in which four major clans and more than 100 shinobi had turned in their Atai Atesh and walked out of Kanoa Tsunade and the Fire Lord could not charge them with desertion as they had willingly resigned from the shinobi forces standing on the deck of the first ship was Hayashi Hyuga. It had been six years since he had last seen Anata having sent her away with Naruto in order to spare her being branded with the caged bird seal despite his outward appearance of putting down his eldest daughter Hayashi did care for her and sending her away was the hardest thing he had ever did but Hinata was smitten with Minato's kid and sending her with him was the best idea at the time and that time Hayashi's personal view in regards to Tsunade and Jiraiya had taken a severe nose dive the two Sanin had been close to Minato and Kushina Tsunade was Mito's granddaughter in Kushina was her niece thus making her Naruto her great nephew while Minato was a former pupil of Jiraiya both blamed Naruto for the deaths of Minato and Kushina when it was clearly the fault of the Uchiha given the reports he had read on that fateful night both had went along with Sarutobi's scheme to make Naruto into Kanoa's weapon and when that failed opted to banish him from the village when it became clear that despite Haruzen's machinations and stunting Naruto's growth had failed even going as far as to place him in the bingo book with a kill on sight order it was clear that the two Sanin had no love for the Uchiha but they chose a virtual traitor over a hero in the five years since Hinata's disappearance alongside Naruto Hayashi had not heard a single word. In regards to his eldest child then word began to leak out about events happening in the west a place so war torn that not even 
the Sanni nor the Akatsuki would be in their right mind to venture there was finally united under the rule of a warlord and his medic ninja wife having been named emperor and empress consort when the Pekor merchant houses began to emerge in several key locations caravans began to appear in Kanoha selling their wares one such branch was an over the border in wind country. That was how Hayashi had found out through one of the merchants who worked with the Empire's information network, that is. Daughter was still alive having fled west and fighting in what was to be known as the Unification Wars alongside Naruto when the merchant told Hayashi that Naruto was now his son-in-law he was not surprised in the least bit what surprised him was that the Empire had been keeping tabs on Kanoha and several other villages in the east the Empire also knew about the tensions threatening to boil over in Kanaha the Kur which is why the Emperor, an Empress consort had reached out to Hayashi should things. In Kanoha get worse to the point that the Hyuga and the Inoshika Cho could not stay then the Emperor and Empress Consort will allow them to migrate to the Western Empire but there were two obstacles that were in the Hyuga clan heads way the Council of Hyuga Elders who had supported the Council and the Godame herself the same Council who had forced his twin brother to either take his place in the Kumo incident or else his son, would be killed the same Council who had voted to brand Hinata. With the caged bird seal and personally take over Hanabi's training to make her an emotionless doll the council and their supporters would be in the way should he decide to take the clan and leave Kanoha to return to the west the land of his ancestors Hayashi knew this as did his twin brother Hizashi the Hyuga elders knew this as well as the Hyuga's origins were in the northern region but the clan relocated to the east once west became unstable and settled in Kanaha no Sato as it was founded which is why the Hyuga elders had been removed from the equation along with their supporters in the main branch Hayashi's late wife not only loved flowers but was also a skilled kunoichi who specialized in poisons so poisoning the tea of their elders and their supporters was no hard task for him with those in the main branch backing him and the full support of the cadet branch Hayashi had wiped out the elders and their allies, when Tsunade demanded an explanation as to what had happened. All he replied was that it was clan business that he and his supporters had averted a civil war by eliminating the traitors to his clan the final straw came with Ego Dame and the Kanoa council had attempted to force his youngest daughter as well as Inoichi's daughter the snake lady and his nephew's romantic interest into the clan restoration act the reason being as it turned out Sasuke Uchiha had taken a recently graduated genin, under his wing teaching him the ropes the boy was an orphan and was looking to make a name for himself as a shinobi what better way to make a name for yourself when you have Sasuke Uchiha training you then three weeks ago when the kid made Chun and Sasuke showed his appreciation by shoving a Chidori into the kid's chest killing him instantly but more importantly gaining the eyes of the betrayer of the Majenkyu Sharingan only problem was that his daughter Hanabi sell 9 Anko Midarashi, and the younger Ino Shika Cho trio had witnessed the murder of course. Sasuke was under the protection of Danzu and the Kanoha Council so the murder was swept under the rug and written off as justifiable homicide only the elder Inoshika Cho and Hayashi had backed their children and sell nine while Sasuke had the backing of both the Godame and the Council then it all came to a head a week ago flashback Kanoha Council chambers the tension was thick inside the Council chambers on one side was the civilian members of the Council the merchants and the wealthy elite of Kanaga no Sato on the other side was the shinobi clan heads of the council Anoichi Yamanaka Hayashi Hyuga Shikaku Nara Chuza Akamichi Tsum Inazuka Asuma Sarutobi Shibi Aburame and Kakashi Ataki their children sat alongside their parents Anko Midarashi was even present at the council's request seated at the head of the chambers flanked by her advisors Kohari Yudatane and Han Nirumi Dokado was Tsunade Senju the Godame Okage of Kanoa standing in front and to the side of the Godame was the Warhawk and commander of the Route ANBU Danzu Shimura standing next to him looking smug over the fact that he had gotten away with murder was Sasuke Uchiha now Danzu's protege and the number 2 guy in the Route ANBU what is this meeting about Inoichi demanded Koharu cleared her throat it is clear to us that there is quite a bit of tension in Kanoha after that dreadful business with that Chunin that the Uchiha had studied under dreadful Tenten parroted he shoved a Chidori into the 
guy's chest in front of my cell Anko Anabi and the Inoshika Cho we see it as justifiable homicide Hanmira Fran Shikaku Nara grunted justified only because you sacrificed the Chunin just so that the Uchiha runt could get the Majenkyu you should watch your mouth Nara Sasuke threatened I am the prince of this village no you are a blight the lazy Nara head retorted you are too troublesome for your own good even as Danza's lapdog Sasuke glared at the Nara clan head slash down and commander Sharingan. A blaze on nobody's lapdog Nara, I am an elite among elite you should remember that well because I have no problem in showing you what the Majenkyu Sharingan can do Sasuke then jerked slightly he then found himself pulling out a kunai from his pouch and holding it against his own throat looking down he saw that his shadow was connected to Shikamaru's own the slacker of a jown and having used his cage mane to ensnare the Uchiha, threaten my father again Uchiha and Itachi will be the true last Uchiha. Shikamaru threatened before things could get out of control Sonade had called for order that's enough Shikamaru Sasuke the both of you stand down Sasuke did not plan on doing just that but a look from Danza said otherwise he deactivated the Sharingan while Shikamaru released the cage main this fighting is pointless Sonade said once both sides calm down we need to show the other villages that despite our trials and tribulations that Kanoha is still strong that the will of fire still burns. Bright and all of us Hayashi and the Inoshika Cho did not like where this is going which is why we have decided to reactivate the Clan Restoration Act in order to rebuild the Uchiha Clan Hanmira said Sakura Haruno has already been chosen by Sasuke to be his wife and he has chosen Anko Mitarashi Ten Ten Ino Yamanaka and Hanabi Huga to be his secondary wives the fathers looked like they've been gut punched Sasuke, remain smug you should be honored to have your daughter spare the great. Responsibility of restoring the Uchiha clan back to greatness Koharu continued that Sasuke has chosen them to help rebuild his clan Hayashi quickly recovered honored even without my eyes I can see where this is going you activated the CRA in order to keep myself and Inoichi in line through our daughters after they had witnessed the Uchiha murder an innocent shinobi justifiable homicide Danzu corrected it was self-defense, justified in the fact that Sasuke now has the Majenkyu Inoichi shot. Back I refuse to accept this so-called decision of this council my daughter is not a prize nor is she breeding stock Haruno wants to pimp out her daughter fine but I will not let Ino marry Sasuke the same with mine Hayashi seconded I would rather marry Orochimaru than spend one day. As that bastard's wife Anko snapped silence Tsunade barked the council has decided and I have agreed your daughters in 1010 will be married off to Sasuke Uchiha by the end of the month if you fail to comply then I will strip you of clan status and your children will become wards of the village either way the CRA still stands and the girls will be married off to Sasuke Uchiha do. Not test me on this matter Lord Yamanaka Lord Hyuga please be reasonable Hanmira said smoothly trying to act as. The voice of reason both of your clans have been here in Kanoha ever since this village was founded by Tsunade's grandfather which means that your clans are only clans because of your skills Kanoha has been good to your clans ever since you joined the village and it would be a shame if that relationship ended so abruptly instead of thinking about your own personal selfish desires maybe you should do what's right Inoichi had caught the underlying meaning, as did Hayashi both men looked at their daughters as if they were playing with their lives then Hayashi slowly rose to his feet and within seconds stood before the Godama advisors Danzu and Sasuke advisor Mitokado you are absolutely right he said the advisors smiled as did Sasuke that is until Hayashi reached inside his robes and pulled out his Atai 8 I believe the time to do what is right is now Hayashi said dropping his Atai 8 where it made a loud clink upon impacting the ground before walking out of the council chambers. Meanwhile both generations of the Inoshika Cho looked at one another and nodded an understanding it was time to go at the same time Anabi pulled off her own Atai 8 and dropped it alongside her father's own clink clink Niji Hyuga's forehead protector landed on top of the Atai Atesh left by his uncle and cousin clink clink Ten Ten and Rock Lee's Atai Atesh landed on top of their teammates Wait Koharu, shouted you can't do this clink Inoichi's Atai 8 landed on the growing pile clink Chusa. Clink Chuji the sound of metal striking the floor was making Tsunade even more angry you are shinobi of Kanahagakura no Sato remember that Koharu shouted Clink both Ino and Anko gave Sasuke the finger as they walked out dropping their Atai Atesh as they walked out this is sedition treason Danzu shouted Clink Shikaku and Shikamaru's Atai Atesh lands on the pile at the same time no consider this our resignation Shikaku drawled as he and Shikamaru walked out of the chambers with that act of.
Defiance what would be known as the Kanoa Exodus has begun end of flashback a Rio for your thoughts the voice of Shikaku Nara brought Hayashi back to reality turning around Hayashi faced the now former Jounin commander and his two teammates you've been on edge ever since we've arrived Shikaku said anything we should know that we don't already Hayashi looked at the three men it was time to come clean the west was the ancestral home of my clan he began the Hugo originally came from Kim and now the Imperial capital when the wars intensified my clan moved across the sea to the east and settled in Kanoha so in effect you are coming back home Chusa said Hayashi nodded there's more once the wars here were done with and the Pekora merchants began to arrive I was visited by a member of the merchant house who gave me a message both Naruto and my daughter had fled to the west when Uzumaki was banished and had fought in the unification wars, so the kids still alive Shikaku said nodding given who his parents were it's really not surprising through the merchant Hanada and Naruto had both promised myself and whoever came with the clan political asylum in the west should things get out of hand back in Kanoa sounds like those two are pretty well connected with the emperor to pull that off and Noichi said Hayashi nodded it seems that way attention we will be docking at the imperial capital. In 30 minutes the first mate shouted as he moved along the deck upon docking you will be asked to. Produce identification so have your ID cards out and ready anyone who does not comply will be taken to jail for the night and you will be sent back east the following morning let's not get arrested tonight people it looks very bad on my record Hayashi sighed the anticipation evident on his face can't believe it's been so long since I've seen Inada come on Hyuga Inoichi said we have to prepare Kim and Harbor the boat containing the four clans and a sizable number of Jounin docked at Kim and Harbor. Once the boat was secured the refugees began to disembark at the end of the docks was the gates which led to the imperial capital two guards one shinobi the other a samurai were posted at the gates on guard duty the samurai was older than his shinobi counterpart and were studying the Kanoa refugees as they approached caravan citizen pilgrim tourist or Hayashi stepped forward brandishing the scroll we are refugees from the east my daughter sent this scroll through the Pekora merchant house the Two guards scanned the scroll for a brief moment before the shinobi disappeared via Shunshin moments later the shinobi reappeared with Yujito and Ai and Toad the former appearing via flame Shunshin while the latter used a lightning Shunshin will take it from here Yujito ordered as you command general Ni the shinobi guard said returning to his post Hayashi's eyes narrowed your Yujito Ni from Kumo he said addressing Yujito. Isn't he the smart one kitten Matatabi noted in a sarcastic tone Yujito told her tenant to quiet down Hayashi turned to A and what is the rakage of Kumo doing in the employ of the emperor former rakage A corrected he pointed to the Atai 8 which was wrapped around one bicep I'm with the unified west now he pointed to Yujito she's been here longer than I have even fought in the unification wars hence her rank the emperor and his wife well they weren't that just yet rescued me from the Akatsuki years ago Yujito explained I fought alongside them and now I lead my own unit I thought that Hanada and Naruto would come and greet us here Hayashi said change in plans Yujito said I am to escort the clan heads and their successors to the imperial palace for a sit down with the chief and the lady everyone else will follow a eh, and head for North Kim and everything has been prepared for your arrival so there is nothing to worry about what about Naruto and Hanada Hayashi asked they are waiting for you inside the complex follow me please streets of Kim and city so what's your story Eno asked as Yujito led the clan heads and their heirs through the streets of the imperial capital I fought alongside the emperor and his wife in the unification wars after they rescued me from the Akatsuki Yujito explained that was five years ago hard to believe that the emperor was just a snot-nosed brat back then so the rumors are true he's about our age then right Shikamaru asked yup Shikamaru noticed that they passed the Suna consulate which was identified by the Suna Jounin standing guard at the gates and the Suna flag a black background with the white hourglass hanging out in the front the empire's friends with Suna he asked Yujito nodded yes Suna is pretty friendly with the unified west Tamari is Suna's representative here we also have representatives from spring country and from mist each with their own consulates and representatives growing up I heard stories about the west Chusa said that this place was so dangerous not even Orochimaru would dare set foot here now I see that things aren't as different here as it was back in Kanoha there's shinobi and even more samurai here than in the east Yujito chuckled those in iron country originally came from here I'm surprised that Kanoha doesn't have a trading agreement with the empire Inoichi noted the emperor and empress has eyes and ears back east the blonde Jinchuriki noted he nor his wife are big fans of Kanaha the Kur. even he knows that an alliance with a village known for its backstabbing and 
rewarding potential traders solely because of their bloodlines is a bad political move Shikamaru snapped his fingers the Pekora merchants those are part of the Empire's spy network right how perspective of Yunara Yujito nodded for a slacker your intelligence is well earned but you are partially correct the Pekora merchant house seen in various locations in the east are in fact a legitimate mercantile guild but some of its branches also house undercover informants and agents from our intelligence division for all intents and purposes pekora merchant house is just a humble merchants guild clever hanabi said minutes later yujito and her escort arrived at the imperial complex the guard saluted yujito who responded with a nod as she led the group inside here we are the imperial complex the nerve center of the unified west Home to the Emperor and the Empress Consort Chuzo looked around and let out a low whistle nice setup the Emperor has not to show he but not too extravagant either he said as Yujito led them to the House of Sovereigns and it is heavily guarded Shikaku noted sensing the chakra signatures around them the shinobi were well hidden while the samurai patrolled the grounds follow me the Emperor and Empress Consort are both waiting Yujito, said Imperial Gardens minutes later watching from the shadows. Naruto and Anata Namakase watched as the clan heads and their children took in the sights of the gardens Hayashi looked pensive as if they reminded him of something Hanabi Ino and Inochi marveled at the exotic flowers and orchids rare in the east but common in the west Shikamaru Shikaku Chusa and Chuji were looking around taking in the surroundings deciding that they had kept their guests waiting long enough Naruto and Anata emerged from behind the group standing at double arm's length Naruto cleared his throat a ham upon turning around the last thing that the clan heads and their children were expecting to see was the former dead last of the Kanoha 11 only now he was a spitting image of Minato Namikaze with Kushino Uzumaki's hair color styled in the same manner as how Minato had worn it when he was alive the whisker marks were gone his face now shaven gone was the orange as he was dressed in black vest pants and boots the shirt was white sleeves rolled up but Hinata had shocked even. Hayashi she was dressed in not in her shinobi uniform but rather in a stunning black chong sam with a white lotus imprint looked incredibly regal in her appearance Naruto tossed a glance at the sakura trees the samurai believed that the perfect blossom is a rare thing they could spend their entire lives looking for that one perfect blossom and for them it would not be a wasted life no way Ino whispered Naruto here in the west they call me emperor Naruto replied wait you're the guy who united the Lands Chuji asked the Emperor of the West that everyone back east is talking about Naruto nodded he then gestured to Anata. Anata also helped as she fought by my side she also is the founder of the Imperial Medic Corps to say that the clan heads their kids and Cell 9 were shocked were an understatement the son of the Yellow Flash and the Red Death once known as the unpredictable knucklehead shinobi had once again lived up to his reputation of making the impossible possible Naruto Rock Lee dashed forward and engulfed Naruto in a bear hug much to the amusement of his wife and the hidden shinobi guards inside the gardens you are the emperor of the west truly the flames of youth shine brightly in you gack lee air Naruto gasped bushy brows had gotten pretty strong in the years since he had left Kanoha oh sorry lee apologized releasing Naruto and Otis reunion with her family was less dramatic a hug to her father to which he had whispered I'm so proud of you and your mother would be Two followed by a second hug to Hanabi and a nod to Niji who responded in kind Shikamaru shook his head and chuckled unbelievable Naruto you truly live up to your title of being unpredictable just like his parents Shikaku seconded glad you see so much of mom and dad and me Naruto said take a walk with us he and Hanada led the group down the garden's pathway. The clan heads flanking them Hayashi and Chuza on Hanada's left and Inochi and Shikaku on Naruto's right cell 9 Hanabi and the Inoshika. Cho tailed behind so how was the way in Hanada asked scenic Hayashi replied he looked down at Hanada's hand and noticed the diamond ring on Hanada's finger and the gold wedding band on Naruto's own finger so married Hanada beamed two years we got married during the final battle at South Ichiyama Ino having overhead asked you two got married during a war that's insane Naruto shrugged his shoulders it was a spur of the moment type of thing the alliance that opposed me was consistent of three warlords in the southern continent the first one was smart enough to defect to my side the last two decided to attack at my base in south Ichiyama lucky me as the hellcats and the demon brigade arrived earlier to support the troops I had here he proposed to me in the midst of the fighting Anata continued Yujito conducted the ceremony right after after the war and once Naruto and I were recognized as emperor an empress consort we did the wedding proper I hate to ask you this but Shikamaru 
began but was cut off by Naruto you want to know about the Jinchuriki who had disappeared right when Shikamaru nodded Naruto confirmed it for him the Akatsuki does not have them I intercepted them and granted them political asylum here all of the Jinchuriki are here Inochi asked with the exception of Gara who is running Suna and the Bijou who was sealed inside Yagura the Jinchuriki are safe Naruto confirmed you know firsthand of the bigotry and discrimination that I had faced back in. Kanoha at the behest of Sarutobi and the two Sanin it was the same in Mist and IWA sure Yujito and B were not treated as bad but the animosity was still there here the people see them not as containers but as people Han has made his home in the Laja Mountains acting as guardian to one of the mountain villages there Rashi the last I heard was somewhere near Tears Point in the southern region Yudakata resides in Shinoku, also in the southern region Fu lives here in the imperial capital Ashi is a member of my intelligence division B lives at one of the trading outposts while A acts as one of my senior advisors you already met Yujito as she is the commander of her own elite unit the Hellcats your actions in Kanoha and elsewhere did no go unnoticed Chikaku noted I know Naruto replied I rescued Yudakata from Itachi and Hashigaki Hellanata and I rescued Yujito from the zombie brothers when we fled Kanoha so Orochimaru plans on invading Kanoha again Hayashi asked not at the moment the Civil war in Kumo left the village weak it will take some time before the snake can build up his forces he and Hinata stopped and faced the clan heads you four were close friends of my parents you and the Jown and with you stuck up for me when no one else did I never got the chance to properly thank you all for that no one should ever go through life the way you did Inochi said not even a Jinchuriki Naruto nodded as you know I promised that day to make up your kindness and I today I will honor. My word your families will be granted both citizenship and clan status effective immediately the Jounin that came along with you will also be granted citizenship in the United West and will retain it provide that they serve the Unified West as they once served the leaf he turned to Hayashi Lord Huga there is one small matter that must be dealt with Hayashi could only guess the caged bird seal the emperor nodded thanks to Anata. I found out how to destroy the seal this is my only condition if you have any problems with the clan council the council and their supporters are dead lord emperor hanabi interrupted naruto and anata exchanged glances before turning back to the heiress explain anata ordered there was a civil war between those who supported a marriage between myself and the uchiha under the cra which consisted of about half of the main branch and my father and myself along with the more moderate members of the main branch and all of the cadet branch hanabi continued we lost half our numbers Sunade tried to interfere but father said that it was a clan matter and outside of her jurisdiction bet the old hag did not take that very well did she Naruto asked knowing her she would have tried to force Hanabi to marry Sasuke in order to spare father's life Hanada added probably wound half done the same with Ino Inochi blanched you sure that was what Tsunade would have done more than likely Naruto replied your families and the others have been sent to North Kim and Anata, and I will hold a quick meeting with the others there once you're settled and wait Lord Emperor Ino cut and there's something else no need for formalities Ino Naruto replied smiling broadly we are still friends you and the others can address me by my name while in private out in public just call me chief it's an old Nickname that stuck with me since my days as a warlord Ino nodded Sasuke has the Majinkyu Sharingan Naruto slowly nodded I know I saw it when I fought him Ataki and Yamato I'm willing to bet that Danzu and those two old freaks that were Sarutobi's teammates had a hand in it right Shikamaru nodded troublesome indeed Naruto Danzu and those two advisors on the council had set up one of the genin to be a student to the Uchiha. The boy a fresh-faced academy graduate looked up to the Uchiha in the same way that the Kanoamaru Corps once looked up to you Naruto nodded it was a shame that Sarutobi had tried to use his own grandson and his two friends as a connection for Naruto to remain loyal to Kanoha when the banishment orders came down Kanoamaru Moegi and Udan had showed their true colors denouncing him as a murderer claiming that he was the one who had killed Buwako Sarutobi his grandmother and Aruzan's wife. In the first year of Naruto's reign the Kanoamaru Corps having recently Made Chunin had been killed slaughtered at the hands of Akatsuki members Haydn and Kakuzu Kanoamaru being on the receiving end of the Jashin ritual and cursed Jutsu Sasuke befriended the boy Chuji continued and took him under his wing they became fast friends when the boy made Chunin Sasuke betrayed him by shoving a Chidori into his chest we know because aside from Hanabi and the three of us about seven Jounin and Anko saw Sasuke commit murder let me guess Naruto surmised you for the snake. 
Lady in the Jown and notified the council but Danzu and those two bastards swept it under the rug somehow Sasuke got off scot-free and with the Majenkyu you even appealed to Tsunade herself and she did nothing am I right so far the trio and Anabi nodded you told your parents and they believe you Naruto continued the Jown and who had accompanied you here are not as GAGA -ga over the Uchiha correct again the trio and Anabi nodded and when Hayashi and the first generation Inoshika Cho tried to complained to Tsunade she told them to basically fuck off the sea or a was the last straw as it is through marriage does the Uchiha can reign and control over the Yamanaka and the Hyuga clans am I right so far this time the fathers of the girls nodded even after all this time that idiot of a former teammate is still weak Naruto surmised Itachi's mercy was wasted on him no matter I have a buffer against the Sharingan should the need arise which is Chusa prodded you are aware of the history of the Six Paths Sage right of that the Uchiha and Senju are descended from him Naruto asked when the gathered team nodded Naruto continued that's a lie the Six Paths had only one child a daughter who is the founder of the Uzumaki clan line the founders of the Uchiha and Senju lines only trained under him it was through Madara that he had unleashed the Vixen upon Kanoha when he fought Hashirama for control oft he leave Vixen Hayashi repeated you mean yes the Nine Tails is female Naruto confirmed don't Worry Kurama's not here he added as he caught the clan heads looking around nervously they breathed a sigh of relief you'll meet her soon enough since you're all here there's something else you should know regarding the Akatsuki something that not even Jiraiya and his information network does not know about and that is Inoichi asked Itachi is not the only Uchiha who is a member Naruto confirmed there is another he is the true leader of the Akatsuki. Looking at the clan heads he revealed what he no Kurama confirmed it for me one thing about the Bijou is that they cannot lie the leader of the Akatsuki is a former teammate of my idiot sensei and the one most directly responsible as to how my life in Kanoha had turned out his name is Abito Uchiha it was obvious that the clan heads recognized the name Abito Chuza parroted he was on your father's team with Hitaki it was said that he had died in the last shinobi war apparently the reports of his death were false he goes by the name Tobi and it was Abito who had unleashed Kurama onto Kanoha and cased me to lose my parents Naruto finished so now this is personal Abito will die and the Akatsuki will fall and what about Sasuke Hayashi asked he shoved a Chidori into my chest Naruto deadpan there is no hope or redemption for him if he decides to become a threat then I will have no problem in eliminating him as well first things first though Niji Hyuga come forward and remove your headband curious Niji maneuvered his way around the others and stood before Naruto the headband removed to reveal the caged bird seal in all its hideous glory there are no slaves here Naruto said as he began to go through a series of hand seals and no slave calls the other master to spell seal destruction he intoned pressing two fingers against Niji's seal Niji felt not a searing pain but what it felt like to him a mild discomfort as he felt that cursed seal purged itself from his body Hayashi and Hanabi watched in amazement as the caged bird Seal once thought to be permanent once it had been placed onto a Hyuga burned away the caged bird seal while archaic in nature is not so permanent as most people would think Hinata explained this was one of the things I had planned on doing when I became the head of the clan to abolish that damned seal altogether the seal is it gone Niji whispered 1010 having moved up so she could witness this nodded smiling happily yes it's gone to prove that the seal was gone Hinata made the hand seal which would activate the caged bird seal since Niji did not see it as he was weeping tears of joy Hayashi and Anabi did see Hinata's attempt to activate the seal only to find that the seal did not activate as it was gone for good being a Fuenjutsu expert does has its perks Naruto explained pulling out a scroll and handing it to Hayashi this is the scroll detailing how to remove the seal from the branch members. Addressing the others he said as of this moment all of you are under my protection. But this does not mean that you are given clan status right off the bat all of you are on probation for six months prove your worth to myself and the council and we will welcome you as one of the great imperial clans of the unified west sounds reasonable Hayashi said while the Inoshika Cho trio nodded an agreement good in the meantime go and get settled and tomorrow there will be a meeting with the council at noon as they want to meet you and your children and tell Ibiki to come as well as. Zabusa wants to meet him Anata, and I will have your assignments ready by then we'll see you guys out oh and we will be speaking with you in private about what has happened in Kanoa Anata added again the clan heads and their children nodded so far the terms given to them by the former gen and turn rulers were very generous the last thing they wanted was to earn the ire of the emperor and his wife time skip a week had passed since the Kanoa exodus in which four of Kanoa's most prestigious 
clans had defected from the village hidden in the leaves five years ago the village hidden in the leaves was considered the strongest of the shinobi villages with the most powerful of the jinchuriki as a deterrent and powerful clans such as the Hyuga and several others it was a village that commanded respect from friend and foe alike then sasuke uchiha had attempted to defect to orochimaru but was stopped by his teammate and brought back to kanaha de no sato that was followed by the tribunal which had pardoned the Uchiha and had banished the Uzumaki Shikamaru Nara had spoken in Naruto's defense as did his father his two teammates parents and Hayashi Hyuga the Uchiha had broken the laws and used the cursed seal to combat Naruto which meant that he had to use the nine tails power in retaliation. The law demanded that it was to be Sasuke Uchiha not Naruto Uzumaki that should be banished surprisingly enough Anko Midarashi Ino Yamanaka Chuji Akamichi Hinata Hyuga and Cell Guy spoke in Naruto's defense but they were ignored and Naruto was banished when those supporting Naruto protested Tsunade and the council threatened to strip the four clans of clan status to which the Hyuga and the Ino Shika Cho responded in kind, by threatening to leave Kanoha crippling it even more should they try. Tsunade and the council had no other choice but to back down after both the Uzumaki and the former Hyuga heiress had fled Kanoha it had became known about the events following the Uchiha retrieval mission in the months following that incident things had went downhill from there Suna was the first to pull out of the alliance it had made with Kanoha and Fire Country Gara had heard from Tamari about how the Inoshika Cho and Cell Guy had spoken in Naruto's defense and approved of their actions. If they decide to leave Kanoha and settle in Suna then they would be most welcome Wave Country soon followed terminating its trade agreements with Kanoha and Fire Country second a scroll came from Spring Demio Koyoki Kasahana not only was Spring Country was terminating its trade agreements with Kanoha but given both Ataki and Jiraiya's intimate betrayal of Naruto she was also pulling out of the Ika Ika movie she also threatened both Jiraiya and Cell 7 with death should they step foot in. Spring Country ever again as Jiraiya would later find out the Spring Demio would later star in a series of movies based off of Murasaki Shibaka's novels once the Empire had been established as a bonus for Spring she had left the Empire with a trading alliance for her homeland the same thing happened with the other countries where Naruto had made an impression treaties and alliances were pulled out once they found out not only the circumstances of the banishment orders but also the relationship between Naruto and the two San Nine betrayal orchestrated by his godparents a betrayal by family in the end Kanaha the Kur was known as a village who banishes their heroes and rewards traitors the Fire Lord as well as the village itself and the two San Nine would be synonymous with the word hypocrite while Kakashi Ataki the majority of the clans who supported the banishment order and Sasuke Uchiha himself would be synonymous with the word traitor even IWA who hated Kanoha with a passion was shocked as to how the son of their most hated enemy was treated despite the stone's long-standing policy on Jinchuriki they would have thought that the son of the Yandane would be better treated two years past and despite Tsunade sending out Shinobi and ANBU to search for Naruto and Inata nothing was heard from them then came the rumors from the west a place which was war-torn since the era of the six paths that not even the Akatsuki would dare to travel there the wars which had plagued the West were now over and the lands were brought under the rule of a single ruler and his wife the Emperor and Empress Consort then merchant houses began to appear in Spring Country Wave Country and Wind Country and several minor countries from what Asuma had found out from several traveling merchants while attending the Chunin exams with his nephew's team while in Suna the Mercantile Guild was known as the Pekora Merchant House, and it had originated from the West now known as the Unified. Western Empire its rulers was the Emperor and his wife the Empress Consort from what I found out the Emperor is just a kid Asuma had said he was only 14 when he killed one of the more powerful warlords and united the Western lands under his rule two years later his wife the Empress Consort is a medic Neen and oversees the Imperial Medic program the Pekora merchants spoke highly of him he is loved by the people and respected by shinobi and samurai alike out of everyone in the West he is. Clearly the strongest Sasuke Uchiha wasn't impressed then one year after Asuma had given his report Jiraiya reported that the Jinchuriki were disappearing Yujito Ni was the first but she had vanished around the same time Naruto had been banished then came the reports that IWA had lost their Jinchuriki and not long after that A and B were overthrown by pro Odo forces and they too disappeared Fu from Taki had also vanished and the rogue missed Ninja Yudakata and his student Hataru were also 
Gan Tsunade and Jiraiya had suspected that the Akatsuki had taken them but in the back of their minds they suspected that the Unified West was the main culprit as Jiraiya had heard that the Akatsuki did not have any of them through his spy the only Jinchuriki left in the elemental countries was Gara, and he was the Kazakage of Suna II the Emperor had quite the interest in wave country as Kanoa had found out when they tried to send a force led by Kakashi Ataki to force Tazuna and the Wave Council to re-establish relations with Kanoha and to change the name of the bridge from the Great Naruto Bridge to the Great Uchiha Bridge upon reaching the bridge they arrived just in time to see the bridge detonate from the multitude of exploding tags once again separating Waveform Fire Country disappointed the Kanoha Shinobi returned home it was also known that a high-ranking official and his wife a man dressed in black conducted inspection tours of the Pekora Merchant House branches in the East Kanoha jumped at the chance to find out the identity of the mystery ruler and his wife Danzu Shimura had sent two squads of his elite root ANBU to retrieve the emperor and his wife he did not take into consideration that the man in black would have a crack team of bodyguards consisting of shinobi and samurai guarding them Jiraiya had came along to watch from the shadows and watched in shock at eight warriors took apart twelve of Danzu's elite na forces while the man in black in his Wife merely sat back and watched while drinking their tea much to Jiraiya's dismay the man's face was concealed by a black Kage-style hat while the woman's dark bangs concealed her eyes so identification was a bust Danzu was furious the he had sent was the cream of the crop and the elite guards the mystery man's bodyguards had crushed them without breaking a sweat Jiraiya had reported to the council that the elite guards were, if not even more skilled than their Tokabetsu Jown in six months. After that Jiraiya had received word from his spy network that Orochimaru was seen lurking near the fire wind border with Kabuto checking out the Pekora outpost located about 5 miles inside wind country there he witnessed from the shadows both Kabuto and Orochimaru get their asses handed to them by who he managed to identify as the commander of the man in black's bodyguards. When Orochimaru summoned Manda she responded by producing her own summon a massive seven-headed serpent which was even bigger than Manda Orochimaru Kabuto and Mando were forced to retreat it was then decided that Ataki Yamato and Sasuke Uchiha the latter having been taken as an apprentice to Danzu was the best chance that Kanoha had in getting the information needed from the mystery man Jiraiya's spy network had tracked the man in black to tea country where one of his elite guards was competing in a taijutsu tournament by this time. The man in black was well known even to the point that a group of S-class Missing Ninja from Kumo and IWA tried to kidnap him for ransom and had also tracked him to T Country and as Kakashi Yamato and Sasuke bear witness the man in black himself was a highly skilled fighter as he brutally killed the S-class group of missing Nin easily missing ninja that could even give Kanoha some serious problems even more so he killed them all without breaking a sweat from Kakashi and Yamato's reports Sasuke had initiated combat first followed by Kakashi and Yamato despite both. Sasuke and Kakashi wielding the Sharingan and Yamato using the Mokotan the man in black had brutally beaten all three men down Kakashi had at the worst as the man in black had punted him through a tree Yamato was out of the running with a broken leg leaving Sasuke to fight the man it was Sasuke himself who was privy as to who the man in black was the man in black was the emperor of the unified west once Jiraiya had confirmed that Tsunade had rescinded her orders in bringing the man in as the last thing she wanted was a war that could easily spell disaster for Kanoha but the council was not convinced and there was a group of Pekora merchants in the village deciding to hear it from the horse's mouth Tsunade summoned one of the Merchants in for questioning Kanoa Council Chambers The merchant in question was a former Kunoichi named Sachiko Asahina Following the Unification War she had left her unit at the age of 27 and had signed on to the Western Empire's Intelligence Division which ultimately led her to the East Her assignment being Fire County Her cover was that of a Kunoichi turned merchant working for the Pekora Merchant House's outpost on the Fire Lightning border but in truth she never did retired from duty she also had a paltry bounty of 25 million Rio placed on her head given her role in killing a group of bandits who had tried to raid the Pecora merchant caravan while on the road to the fire capital from what Kanoha knew about her she held a bloodline fire release allowing her to wield purple flames twice a week she and her entourage of Pecora merchants would travel to Kanoha she was also loyal to her emperor to the point that she nearly blew her cover when she ended up arriving on the 
anniversary of Naruto's banishment. Fortunately her co-workers had managed to calm her down so imagine her surprise while packing up the stand and preparing for the trip back to the fire capital she was summoned to the Okage Tower by three members of the ANBU to face the Kanoa Council Jiraiya was also present watching from the sidelines the years had not been too kind on the Sanmin once his role in Naruto's betrayal had became known as reputation had went down the gutter through Demio. Kasahana's Ika Ika series had stopped selling throughout the elemental countries the Ika Ika movie would not be made in his last mission Jiraiya had narrowly survived while investigating the Akatsuki Jiraiya was ambushed near Amagekir by Conan and the Six Paths of Pain despite his Senjutsu and his Toad Summon Jiraiya had nearly died in the encounter last his Ika Ika series had lost its popularity due to a new series of romantic novels and poems emerging from the West through the Pekora Merchants by Murasaki Shibaku Much to Jiraiya's dismay Murasaki's novels were a lot better than the raunchy Ika Ika series so much so that Koyoki Kazuhana had signed on to do the movie Tsunade looked at the former Kunoichi easily identified by her crimson flak vest and her ninjato which was strapped to her back Sachiko looked back at her with a bored yet curious expression also present was Kakashi Ataki and Sasuke Uchiha the latter looking at her like she was a piece of meat the slug. Sage cleared her throat first off thank you for coming to this meeting you are not in trouble of any kind we just have some questions we would like to ask of you Sachiko shrugged her shoulders shoot first off what's your name Tsunade asked Sachiko Asahina former captain of the Imperial Defense Forces 3rd Battalion 7th Division 1st Squad now I'm a merchant with the Pekora Merchant House Sachiko replied a merchant yet you are armed and wear the flak vest of a ninja Koharu pointed out I wear this as a badge of honor to remind myself that even though I am a merchant I will always be a ninja Sachiko replied the katana is for self-defense the shinobi could respect that Danzu included an ANBU handed her the picture of the disguised Naruto in his man in black outfit and the disguised Hinata in her Chonsam dress a rose in her hair but her face was away from the picture so identification was impossible can you identify the couple in the picture Tsunade asked of course Sachiko replied that's the emperor of the west the woman is his wife the emperor's consort whispers and murmurs were heard throughout the council chambers do they have names danza asked they do but i am under orders not to say it to ensure this there is a seal on my tongue which keeps me from speaking their names the emperor and his wife has many enemies and there are those in the east who wish to make a name for themselves by eliminating his imperial majesty and take his throne as clan is virtually the richest out of all of the clans in the west that was understandable to the gathered shinobi that's not good enough asana haruno snap tell us their name sachiko turn to the civilian council member you don't like that tough shit i answer to the emperor and the empress consort not you how dare you asana shouted rising to her feet you will tell us their names right now or else we will have you arrested haruno sit down tsunade ordered leave it to the hot-headed haruno to antagonize there guest but asana sputtered shut up and sit down the godame bellow the sheer will alone made asana collapse into her seat once asana was properly humbled tsunade turned back to sachiko i apologize for representative haruno's behavior apology accepted lady okage sachiko replied i take it you want to know more about the boss the boss tsunade repeated it's a nickname we have for the emperor sachiko explained it goes back during the days of the unification war to answer your question yes tsunade replied we would like to know more he's tall six feet even reddish blonde hair blue eyes but when he uses his bloodline they turn to purple with a ripple like pattern likes to wear black which earned him the nickname the man in black i fought alongside him and his wife in the unification war back when he was a teenager you mean sum began sachiko nodded he unified the lands and became emperor when he was 16 years old that was two years ago quite an amazing feat for a kid both he and the Lady married during the final battle at South Ichiyama Sasuke snorted had I been in command of the imperial forces I would have ended the conflict much sooner as I am an elite Sachiko turned to the Uchiha with an innocent smile I seriously doubt that word has spread that you and two other Jounin level shinobi had been defeated at the boss hands this after he had killed a group of S class shinobi so much. For being an elite what can you tell us about his wife Shibi Aburame asked quickly diffusing. The situation while Kakashi ordered Sasuke to sit down his wife is no slouch she is highly skilled in taijutsu and medical ninjutsu she is also the founder of the Imperial Medical Corps which produces top-notch medics for both shinobi and samurai in the meantime something had clicked in Jiraiya's head Sachiko had said that his eyes were purple with ripples a sign of his bloodline Kakashi and Yamato said the same thing. 
In their reports he then asked her your emperor of the bloodline you described. Purple eyes with ripples yes Sachiko confirmed the emperor wields the most powerful of the dojitsu the Rinnegan as he is a direct descendant of the Six Paths sage the bloodline passed down to him thus earning him the nickname emperor of the Six Paths I thought only the Senju and the Uchiha were descended from the Six Paths Danza said the Six Paths adopted the ancestors who would become the Uchiha and Senju clan founders Sachiko calmly explained the Six Paths had one child a daughter of whom the Rinnegan was passed on to she is the true descendant of the Six Paths is that all I need to get back to the outpost Tsunade nodded and with a small bow Sachiko used a fire shunsen to make her exit office of the Hokage after Tsunade had dispersed the council she was back inside her office also present were the two elder advisors Councilman Shimura and Jiraiya Shizen stood nearby holding Tantan in her arms. What do you know about the Rinnegan Tsunade asked her former teammate it's what Asahina says. The most powerful of the Dojitsu Jiraiya explained it allows the wielder to master each of the five elements only one other person had the Rinnegan but I have lost contact with him early on it can't be even more powerful than the Sharingan can it Hanmira asked it as Jiraiya confirmed add the fact that the Emperor is not much older than the Uchiha and the West live and breathe warfare ever since the era of the Six Paths the Emperor could know as a powerful warrior in some cases he could be even more powerful than the first four Hokages combined there's no way that a snot-nosed brat could be even more powerful than the Uchiha Koharu snapped still this is something that we cannot ignore Danza commented with Kanoa's reputation in the gutter, we are at its weakest since the Nine Tails attacked Asuna stands poised to take our position as the strongest shinobi village in the village in spring country is a serious threat to our standing with the other nations supporting the qb brat our enemies can attack us without penalty this man in black this emperor of the unified west we must reach out to him to seek an alliance with him i concur hamira seconded the unified west from what i have heard as powerful warriors both shinobi and samurai if we can get an alliance with him we can send advisors to the western empire to make sure that he has kanoa's best interests at heart the hidden statement did not go by jiraiya or tsunade what hamira had meant by best interests had literally meant using the empire's resources and manpower to rebuild kanoa's infrastructure and if the emperor was a weak-willed fellow then they could make him into a puppet ruler while they controlled everything from behind the scenes tsunade turn to jiraiya looks like you're going to the western empire Jiraiya consider this an S-ranked mission of the utmost importance but you're not going alone I want you to take Captains Hitaki and Sarutobi with you along with Jaun and Haruno Inazuka and Aburame as escort aside from yourself Koharu and Hanmura will accompany you find out what the Emperor's motives are and see if the rumors of him retrieving the Jinchuriki are true if they are Jiraiya prodded the Bijou are the property of the Senju clan which makes the Jinchuriki by extension property of the Senju and of the leaf Tsunade replied my grandfather handed over the bijou to the other shinobi villages in order to keep the peace if the emperor did in fact take the jinchuriki he shifted the balance of power in his favor which means that if he does become hostile then he could unleash the power of the jinchuriki on the leaf jiraiya finished i will go as well danza said sasuke uchiha and sai will accompany me as my personal guard someone has to see whether or not the empire will be a threat to the leaf in the future if the emperor decided to join our side it will prove beneficial to us in the long run fine Tsunade snapped make sure that both you and Ataki keeps a leash on the Uchiha I will not have Kanoa destroyed because that idiot cannot keep his ego in check who knows the Uchiha could find himself a wife in the unified west which could make our claim even more stronger looking around for a moment she asked whereas Sasuke streets of Kanoa at the same time Sachiko Asahina appeared before the other Pekora merchants as they had just finished packing up their stand securing the loads onto several horse pulled carts everything okay Captain Miko Nanakase asked unlike Sachiko she was a samurai assigned to protect the Pekora merchants Sachiko nodded yes everything is fine let's go as Sachiko and the Pekora caravan and their guard prepared to make their way out of Kanoa they received an unwelcome sight that sight was Sasuke Uchiha he was not alone as he was Flanked by two of Danzu's root A and B U wonderful Sachiko muttered when she had accepted the assignment to head overseas as part of the Empire's information network Naruto had briefed the team of informants and merchants about the senior hierarchy within Kanoa as well as his former team so she was prepared when she was brought in for questioning by the Godame and the council Sasuke fell in step beside Sachiko the root A and B U following close behind you are a strong Kunoichi captain Asahina he began. 
where I'm from you have to be Sachiko replied you either become strong or you become the victim I was there you know when your caravan was attacked by bandits Sasuke continued and I pride myself in seeing strength as well as beauty Sachiko on the other hand was fighting the urge not to gut her emperor's former teammate as you can see I am just like you an elite Sasuke said. Although the people in Kanagakura treat me more like a prince can you make this quick Sachiko asked not to sound rude or anything but my people have a long journey ahead of us we need to get back to the outpost very well Sasuke replied Captain Asahina I am proposing that we unite our clans in marriage Sachiko stopped and turned to the Uchiha I am honored that you would ask me to marry you she replied but I must decline as I am already married that shot Sasuke down pity what does your husband have that I don't I am an Uchiha an elite. Among elite no matter when you want a true shinobi for a husband I will be. Waiting Captain Asahina I wouldn't hold my breath you bastard Sachiko thought darkly as she and her caravan exited the village the next day inside the house of sovereigns Hayashi Hyuga Anabi Hyuga Inoichi Yamanaka Ino Yamanaka Shikaku Nara Shikamaru Nara Chusa Akamichi Chuji Akamichi Anko Midarashi and Ibiki Marino stood before the Imperial Council Naruto and Inata Namikaze sat at their usual heads. At the table along with Takuma Uzumaki A and Kurama Naruto had revealed Kurama as the nine tails in human form and had explained the circumstances in regards to the attack on Kanoa the clan heads and their heirs had taken the news quite well that in the empire was also home to half demons and Hanyu all who had sworn loyalty to the emperor and empress consort Sabuza Mamachi was also present the mist swordsman turned demon brigade general wishing to meet the legendary Ibiki Naruto and Inada were all business not letting their personal relationships with the Kanoa refugees get in. The way as the council introduced themselves to the former clan heads and their children now I've been looking over your files along with my wife and my advisors Naruto began and we have come up with your assignments first off in order to do your job you are all hereby promoted to John and an aide appeared before the refugees holding several Atai Atesh on a small tray Hayashi Hanabi Abiki and both generations of the Ino Shika Cho. Each retrieved a Atai 8 once the aid was gone Naruto content. With the meeting Ibiki Marino Yuanko Midarashi and Inoichi Yamanaka are assigned to the interrogation division at that moment Zabuza stepped forward this is General Zabuza Mamachi commander of the Demon Brigade and head of the interrogation division Inoichi recognized the name near the Demon of the Mist that I am Zabuza replied. But I prefer the demon of Kimon the chief has spoken highly of you Yamanaka turning to Ibiki he said Marino so we finally meet in the flesh I've heard of you as well. Mamachi Ibiki replied I just wanted to say that I am a big fan of your work and I can't wait to see you in action Zabuza said here we are in the business of interrogation and torture and let me tell you that here business is good and not nudged her husband you think that Zabuza enjoys his job a bit too much she whispered can't deny the results Naruto whispered back clearing his throat Naruto. Continued the meeting Shikamaru Nara you noticed the Suna consulate in the city right yeah I did chief. The slacker replied your assignment is that you are my liaison to the Suna consulate Naruto said Tamari is the Suna representative here Shikamaru muttered troublesome under his breath but accepted the assignment Shikaku Nara as you are the Jounin commander you are assigned to the ministry of shinobi affairs under Okajima Naruto said despite your bad habits of being a slacker you are also impartial and will not take no one's sides. When it comes to investigating shinobi matters Chusa and his son will accompany you this does not mean that I will break up the Ino Shika Cho both teams will be called on to help the people Inada turn to Ino Ino Yamanaka your file said that you were studying to be a medic Nin right yes lady Inada Ino replied the imperial medic corps has produced top notch medic Nins in combat. Medic Sanada explained Matsuri of Suno was a protege of mine as she is now the head of Suna's medic program if you wish you can study under me Ino nodded her head in approval I'd be I'd be honored Lady Hanada she gushed Hanada turned to her father since it's only fair for one of my husband's clansmen to serve as an advisor I talked it over with the others and they agreed to offer you the chance to join the advisor staff I accept your offer Hayashi said there is still the matter of your position within the clan Anabi can take over as head of the clan Anada suggested I will officially hand over that responsibility to her Hayashi nodded and the other Hyuga they will serve as part of the military police force patrolling Kim and Naruto replied there's something else I want to know what were the views on the other Jaun and senseis they supported the Godame and the sea are as Shikaku said Sarutobi and his wife Maido Gai and Ataki at that moment a shinobi working for the intelligence 
the vision appeared via Shunshin and handed Naruto a scroll. Naruto thanked the shinobi who disappeared and opened the scroll. Anata leaned over to read the contents of the scroll and immediately frowned while well, Naruto drawled that didn't take them very long. What is it? Anoichi asked Naruto passed the scroll to a guard who in turn passed it to Hayashi allowing him and the other clan heads to read over his shoulders. This has been verified Hayashi. Asked afraid so Naruto replied, but it was something that I was expecting once the west became known to the countries and the shinobi villages back east looks like I'm going to have to face my past troublesome Shikaku said Senju has sent Jiraiya Shimura Midokado and Yudatane here with Hataki Sarutobi and the remnants of cells 7 and 8 as part of their guard Kanoha has become desperate Naruto said with my banishment they had became a virtual pariah state. Along with all of Fire Country now with four of their clans here along with some of their most experienced John and Kanoha in the eyes of the other major villages will no longer be seen as one of the strongest Suno will more than likely take Kanoha's spot as the strongest village there's still the matter of the envoy Suncher continued interlacing his fingers with Kanoha's reputation Gon Senju had more than likely sent the envoy here to negotiate a military and political alliance second Katsumoto added since the imperial nation is still young as is our rulers Kanoha would only leech off off us use our resources to further their agenda in most cases they would transform our emperor into a puppet ruler and Danzu Shikaku asked it takes a warhawk to know a warhawk the elder samurai continued Shimura wants to investigate our military capabilities to gauge our strength despite their political savvy we have the muscle but most important to see whether or not we are a threat in the event that he sees us as such more than likely he would shall we say cut the head off the snake are you sure about that Hayashi asked if I was Shimura I would Suncher replied what's the exact time of arrival they will arrive on Thursday night Naruto replied as much as I would like to turn them away I can't as it would violate the laws of hospitality in regards to foreign envoys meanwhile with cell 9 while Naruto and the Imperial Council made plans as to how they would deal with Jiraiya and the Kanoa envoy once they arrived 1010 Rock Lee and Niji Hyuga decided to walk around the Imperial capital Niji was in good spirits following the removal of the caged bird seal aside from that fact he could publicly pursue his relationship with 1010 without any consequences Noon approached the trio was strolling through the imperial capital's merchant district when 1010 stopped in her tracks in front of a store once Niji and Rock Lee stopped and looked at what caused 1010 to stop they shook their heads in resignation 1010 had been their teammate for many years and she prided herself on being the resident weapons master for Cell Guy which is why the store in question which made 1010 pause was Kimon's premier weapons shop the sign on the side read Hamira weapons and accessories resigning themselves to their proverbial fate Niji and Rock Lee followed 1010 inside weapons line the wall sword staffs various melee weapons the works the weapons vendor was easily identified by her khaki flak vest as a member of the Hellcats and she looked older than 1010 she watched with mild amusement as the woman with the buns looked at the weapons with great interest behind the vendor was various types of equipment and accessories need help with anything the vendor asked 1010 shook her head no just looking I can see you have an eye for weapons the vendor said you have no idea Niji said ignoring the nasty look his girlfriend was giving him you won't find no better weapons here in the west or in the east for that matter the vendor said that comment got the trios attention how did you rock lee began it's quite the hot topic here among the people here that and it's pretty obvious that you three are not originally from here i'm sorry where are my manners i'm miko amira this is my family's weapon shop i used to own a weapon shop back in kanoha 1010 replied but i ended up having to sell it when i left kanoha during the exodus she picked up a knife and inspected it to 1010 it was unique as the blade was about 24 inches long the cutting edge of the Blade being inwardly curved in shape that's a favorite weapon in the Lodge of Mountains north of here Miko explained the Empress wields a pair it's called a cookery knife it's beautiful 1010 said the metal used in our weapons comes from the Lodge of Mountains Miko explained the iron in the mountains is very strong aside from selling weapons we also do custom orders as our clan are also the best swordsmiths and metal workers. In the west we carry katanas ninjados tantos thou broadswords just damn near. Anything your heart desires we also sell accessories such as storage scrolls weights even medical kits so what are you shinobi or samurai Niji asked samurai Miko replied recently promoted to the rank of Saizibushi which is the samurai equivalent of Jounin so you came from Kanoha which meant you knew the chief and his wife when they were growing up right when the trio nodded Miko asked so what were they like he wore orange 1010 deadpanned a color which all but screamed kill me that and he was 
Known as the unpredictable knucklehead ninja of Kanoa his wife is my cousin she had a crush on him when we were in the academy our relationship was for lack of a better term strain Niji said remembering the Chunin exams in which he had nearly killed Hanada out of spite followed by Naruto beating him inside the Kanoa stadium fortunately she's not the type to hold grudges 1010 I had the flak vest I've seen that same type of vest on several of the Kunoichi and Samurai this identifies me as. A member of the Hellcats Miko said noticing Yujito enter the store while the trio of Shinobi did not the Hellcats 1010 parroted what's that the Hellcat unit is an all-female unit consisting of Kunoichi and Anabugeisha under my command Yujito explained enjoying the fact that she had gotten the jump on the three former Kanoa Shinobi. We are the best at what we do and I won't work with anyone who is up to snuff you have a weapon specialist 1010 asked Yaru Yujito replied pointing to Miko. But she is my samurai weapon specialist why you wish to sign up 1010 nodded I'm interested in wanting to know more Yujito looked at the younger woman as if she was sizing her up him you show promise and I pride myself on finding such talent come by the red lotus later on for lunch we'll talk some more 1010 nodded eagerly okay the Kanoa envoy consisting of Jiraiya the two elders Asuma Sarutobi Kakashi Ataki Sai and the remnants of cells 7 and 9 arrived in Kimen City late Thursday. Knight Tsunade and the Kanoa Council had made it clear as this was an SS-class mission of the utmost importance the Kanoa envoy was to gain an audience with the Emperor of the Unified West and seek a military and political alliance with Kanoa and Fire Country upon arrival in the Imperial Capital the first thing that Jiraiya and the Others did was secure lodgings for their stay the customs officer who had checked their identification had pointed them in the direction of the Red Lotus in a three-story inn and restaurant who catered to tourists and dignitaries unknown to Jiraiya and the others was that the owner of the Red Lotus was married to a member of the Empire's Information Division the members of the Demon Brigade watching their every move once the Kanoa group was settled and they had put in the request for a guide. To show them around the imperial capital the Red Lotus was built around two hot springs and the Red Lotus was famous for its springs only the hot springs in the Laja Mountains surpassed those found at the inn of course it took both Asuma and Kakashi to keep Jiraiya away from peeping in the hot springs meanwhile inside the House of Sovereigns the Emperor and Empress of the Unified Western Empire were in a meeting with the captain of the elite guards the team of shinobi and samurai assigned to protect the emperor and empress consort Benisato Minazuki was a member of the Minazuki clan the Minazuki was known to both the shinobi and the samurai as the snake tribe for good reason as the Minazuki clan were poison specialists and claimed ancestry from the legendary eight-headed serpent Yamada no Orochi aside from being poison specialists the Minazuki were also skilled assassins and were a serious thorn in Rokabunji Oda's side when he ran Kimon like Orochimaru the Minazuki had snake summons but Unlike Manda theirs had multiple heads and was much bigger with Benisato's main summon being the seven-headed serpent known as Ajiha their taijutsu style was also modeled around the snake and was proven to be incredibly deadly it was because of her abilities that she was known as the snake queen of Kim and Benisato was as tough as she was beautiful and was dressed in her casual attire which reminded Naruto of Tsunade's attire save that the colors were different a white Hayori with the design of Yamada no Orochi on the back of black sleeveless kimono style blouse which was held closed by a grey obi her pants are the same color as her blouse and obi the tattoos on her shoulders and neckline were slightly visible while her left arm had a tattoo of a snake coiled around her arm ending at her wrist her hair fell down her back ending at her waist as Naruto and Inada found out Benisato herself was the diametric opposite of Orochimaru she had the beauty and brains to match the snake Sanin but not his ego nor his desire for immortality despite being roughly the age of the Sanin she looked like she was in her mid-twenties she did not use an immortality jutsu like Orochimaru or a jinjutsu like Tsunade but as with the female members of the Minazuki clan shed their skin to maintain their youthful appearance last both her and the Minazuki clan were loyal to their emperor and empress her mother Siko Minazuki was the matriarch of the clan she was offered a place on the council but had declined having decided to retire from the post and naming her second child Benisato's younger brother Benjiru as her successor Benjiru worked in the Shinobi Affairs Division a prodigy in her younger days she was the only one who can beat Takuma Chiba 6 falls out of 10 and could give the Empress Consort a run for her money Benisato also had run-ins with the Shinobi from Kanagakura no Sato as she accompanied her Emperor and Empress to the East on inspections of the consulates and the 
Pecora Merchant Houses while competing in a Taijutsu tournament in Tea Country she had defeated Mado Guy who was there with several other Jounin investigating the Emperor and Empress Consort unknowns to the both of them at the time among her victories against those who had wronged her Emperor and Empress was against Asuma Sarutobi Tsumenazuka and Mado Guy she also scared the crap out of Jiraiya when he tried to peek in on her, and forced both Orochimaru and Kabuto to retreat which was a nice. Bonus you wanted to see me she asked Naruto nodded consider this AS class assignment Benisato nothing hard or fancy I want you to act as an escort to the Kanoha envoy when they arrive the snake queen from Waimi Inata, and I want eyes on Jiraiya and the others Naruto explained I wouldn't put it past for Jiraiya and the others to try anything funny while they are here since you have faced off and beaten most of them in combat they would be less inclined to attack you that and Jiraiya has a dislike of snakes as it reminds him of his former teammate Hanada added Benisato thought about it for a moment then she nodded okay chief lady Hanada I'll take the assignment where are they now they are at the red lotus and Hanada replied try not to kill them okay I will take my leave Benisato said as she turned on her heel and walked out of the council chambers red lotus and minutes later the following day the Kanoa shinobi were informed that their guide had arrived to Jiraiya's shock and horror he saw that their tour guide was the snake lady he had met back in tea country now fully clothed she had a somewhat amused expression at seeing Jiraiya react upon seeing her again ahh it's you Jiraiya shouted pointing at the woman Asuma Sarutobi recognized the woman as well as did Kakashi Ataki you're the group looking for a guide around the city Benisato asked you're looking at her she introduced herself Major Benisato Minazuki commander of the elite guard she turned to Jiraiya so you're leading this group you old pervert Kiba looked at Benisato with an odd look on his face you smell a lot like snakes he confirmed Benisato turned to the feral John and the Kanoa envoy watched as her serpent tattoo began to shift slightly do you have a problem with that dog breath she asked sweetly Kiba shook his head rapidly no none at all you know Jiraiya Asuma asked changing the subject of course Benisato replied the pervert tried to peek in on me one night while I was enjoying a late Night soak in the hot springs back in tea country a while back flashback tea country several months ago sneaking into the women's hot springs was easy enough for Jiraiya but he was very disappointed upon entering as there was a single woman inside the hot springs Jiraiya saw only her backside but he could tell that she was very curvaceous her skin an exotic shade of pale he could tell that she had long dark hair but it was slung over one shoulder Jiraiya also noticed that from the neck down Ending at her knees her backside and shoulders was covered in tattoos blue clouds and lotus blossoms and much to Jiraiya's dismay snakes snakes Jiraiya thought why did it have to be snakes the woman had sensed Jiraiya's presence are you lost she asked this is the women's bath quickly getting over his gaff Jiraiya responded sorry he said playing the fool I seem to have lost my way and Jiraiya stopped in mid speech as she looked at the woman's body art was his mind playing tricks on him or was the snake tattoos on her back moving no he was not going crazy the snake tattoos are moving the woman stood up and turned around Jiraiya saw that she was gorgeous, green eyes full lips were it not for the fact that his life was in danger from the snake tattoos which had now removed themselves from her body and taken a more lifelike form he would have jumped on the woman but Jiraiya didn't realization crept across his face as he recognized her from several weeks earlier from when she had defeated both Orochimaru and his lackey near the wind fire border it's not very nice to try and peep in on women you know she said as she outstretched her hand her snakes coiled ready to strike fangs dripping with venom it would be a shame if I took the one thing that you treasure the most and my snakes venom is so potent that it can make your little boys impotent the threat of being rendered infertile had the proper effect on Jiraiya he turned and ran for his life once the perverted Sanin was Gone the snakes reverted back to their tattoo-like forms and settled back onto the woman's body the woman herself began to laugh her ass off relishing in the fact that she had scared the crap out of her emperor's former godson end of flashback Benisato's backstory earned Jiraiya a death glare from Sakura and Koharu Asuma and Kakashi shook their heads after the Kanahagakura envoy introduced themselves Danzu was looking at the woman with interest that is a very interesting technique you have he commented as it should Benisato replied raising her left hand allowing the snake tattoo on her arm and forearm to come to life the dark snake coiled around her arm flicking its forked tongue out and hissing at Jiraiya the Minazuki are descended from Yamata no Orochi or so the story goes you can say that the 
Minazuki and the snake are intertwined the snake returned to its normal position and changed back into a tattoo about the tour of the city Asuma prodded of course Benisato replied since we are closest to the hospital we will start there the empress will not be there as she will be with her husband in a series of meetings with the council however Major Yamada the lady's second in command and director Uzumaki will be present. As expected Benisato noted the reactions of the Kanoha envoy when she said Uzumaki Jiraiya's mood darkened as did Asuma and Kakashi Sakura looked angry as did Kiba Sasuke looked smug Sai looked well like Sai Danzu's frown deep in Koharu and Hanmura held their tongues in check lest they said the wrong thing and get ejected from the country as their guide was the commander of the emperor and empress consort's bodyguards did you say Uzumaki Sakura repeated yes Benisato confirmed director Karen Uzumaki she was an understudy of the empress consort alongside Matsuri of Suna that shot Jiraiya and the others down oh Uzumaki you say Danzu repeated I thought the Uzumaki clan were wiped out in the last war back in the east oh far from it Benisato replied the Uzumaki is one of the great imperial clans of the west its clan patriarch is Takuma Uzumaki at that name Jiraiya and Danzu visibly paled as did Asuma Sarutobi Takuma Uzumaki was the younger brother of Kushina Uzumaki which made her Minato's brother-in-law and more importantly Naruto's uncle he was known as the maelstrom of Whirlpool for his skills in Fuenjutsu and Ninjutsu as well as his fierce temper as Benisato led Jiraiya and the others to the hospital the wheels in Jiraiya's head were turning Kushina had told him once she was safe in Kanoha that the Uzumaki had been decimated that only a scant few remained following Yuzushio Gakure's destruction, but Kushina had been more wily that Jiraiya had given her credit for so Kushina Jiraiya thought you must have known that Whirlpool was going to fall and obviously you did not trust Kanoha but you were married to Minato so your hands were tied so you had Takuma and the surviving Uzumaki and Whirlpool Shinobi flee the country never would have suspected that they would relocate here well played Kushina well played indeed what Jiraiya did not know was that the bodies of the Uzushiogakure Shinobi that littered the ruined village were instead those of Kumo and IWA Shinobi dressed in Yuzu's uniforms Kushina had ordered her brother the Yandame Yuzukage to relocate the entire village to its fallback spot located in the west out of sight out of mind but a second thought began to creep into Jiraiya's mind if Naruto fled to the west and found out that he had family here and if they found out from him about Kanoa's betrayal he pushed that thought out of his mind as Benisato led him and the others to the hospital the imperial hospital of Kimen was bigger than that of the one in Kanoa located in a wooded section of Kimen the hospital consisted of two buildings the main hospital which was a five-story building and the smaller three-story building which housed the hospital's intensive care unit for its more serious cases Karen Uzumaki the director of the hospital and Kokoro Yamada the Empress Consort's number two in the medic program had given the Kanoa envoy a tour of the hospital aside from medic ninjas who worked with the shinobi the samurai had combat medics the medics in training got the basics of medic training from the Academy which consists of human anatomy chakra control and studying medical texts upon graduation the medics were given a 8-month training course in their respective fields as Sakura and the others saw the medic means were proficient in techniques such as the chakra scapel and the mystic palm jutsu but they were also well versed in acupuncture and shiatsu finger and palm pressure stretches and other massaging techniques the combat medics who did not use chakra relied on the latter what? surprised Sakura and the others were that someone of them had incorporated their various elemental releases into the medical ninjutsu the medic shinobi and samurai were also highly skilled in herbology the theory of traditional herbal therapy something that has not been seen in the east as the western empire was home to many types of medicinal herbs such herbs in the east were very rare when Sakura questioned as to how effective the imperial combat medics were Karen and Kuda had taken them to an observation room where they watched an operation in progress the patient was a prominent merchant working for the Pecora merchant house who was being operated on for a ruptured appendix while Karen explained the procedure first they used shiatsu to dull the pain from his appendix then they used it to knock him out cold working quickly they opened him up removed the ruptured appendix and stitched him close the merchant would be in bed for two weeks following the operation but would make a Full recovery the operation took less than 30 minutes the combat medics were professional and precise despite the fact that the Imperial Medic Corps was far more advanced than Kanoa's own program Sakura Haruno was highly impressed as was Danzu and the two elders with the tour of the hospital over Benisato had taken back her charges Danzu then suggested that they go and check out the school for the shinobi and samurai. 
in training in the Unified West the training school for the Rising. Shinobi and Samurai had no official name it was simply known as the Academy the largest ones were in the major cities in the West Kimen Karata Port Shinzoku South Ichiyama and Tears Point located in the western part of Kimen the Academy was easily twice the size of the Shinobi Academy in Kanoha a compound onto itself complete with dorms for orphan children who were being trained as Samurai and Shinobi when Naruto and Hinata had ascended to the position of Emperor and Empress Consort they realized that a national system of education for the next generation of samurai and shinobi was needed the second thing that naruto and anata had done after establishing the elite guard was to organize a system of training schools for the shinobi and samurai unlike the shinobi academy in kanoa which by their time had been watered down and in most cases lacked the necessary funding as the civilian council had stole a sizable portion of the academy's funding the emperor and empress consort with the full backing of the Imperial Council made sure that the academy was a top-notch school the faculty being only Jounin and Saizibushi veterans who had fought in the unification wars the academy had two headmasters one samurai the other a shinobi the shinobi headmistress was Azumi Kato a Jounin level shinobi while the samurai headmaster was a Saizibushi named Ryuhaku Kojima the pair had already been notified of the visit and was asked by Naruto and Inada to give them a tour of the facility. The academy students were taught not only the basics such as geography reading writing arithmetic and science but also taught basic hand-to-hand -hand combat for both shinobi and samurai as jiraiya and the three elders found out not only did the shinobi and samurai in training attended the same classes but that the samurai can also use chakra to reinforce their weapons to make them even more stronger as the students entered in their final two years in the academy they began to take specialized classes in regards to their fields for those who showed interest in pursuing a medical career they would begin taking classes in basic and advanced medicine upon graduation aside from being assigned to their cells the rising medic means and combat medics would spend two days out of the week at the hospital for those who specialized in tracking and spying they had sensor class for the shinobi and recon class for the samurai physical education was also top priority as jiraiya and the others saw various classes in chakra control physical strength training and endurance training as headmaster kojima and headmistress kato said the training is brutal yes but it makes them tough in the assignments simply put an s rank mission to kanoa is like a c rank to the Imperial Shinobi and Samurai Jiraiya and Danzu wanted to see more but Benisato refused citing national security issues in short the academy's training methods were far superior to those of Kanoa's own as much as the elders and Jiraiya hated to admit as the empire's methods cranked out battle-worthy Shinobi and Samurai in half the time Kanoha could even worse a mid-level Imperial Shinobi and Samurai could easily thrash five of Kanoha's Jounin so the young Shinobi and Samurai in training take classes together Koharu asked as they were leaving the academy yes Benisato replied as the imperial defense forces are both shinobi and samurai they train together and fight together the emperor and empress believe that a warrior's strength whether they are a shinobi or a samurai comes from the warrior who is fighting by his side something that suncher has taught them both show respect and honor to those who fight by your side and it will be returned a hundredfold suncher danzu repeated he had Heard the name before when he was younger he is the Minister of Defense and the only samurai to ever reach the rank of Kodenbushi the legendary samurai Benisato explained similar to that of Kanoa's legendary Sanin Ms. Jiraiya knew as he Sunade and Orochimaru had faced the wily samurai in a three-on-one battle and lost shortly. After their confrontation with Hanzo the salamander on top of that suncher had also defeated Haruzan Sarutobi a man known to Kanoa as the Professor and the God of. Shinobi and fought General Mifune to a draw the samurai have a ranking system which is similar to the Shinobi the Snake Queen continued Aonise Bushi is the equivalent of Jenin Chukin Bushi is the equivalent of Chunin and Saizi Bushi is the equivalent of Jounin only a Saizi Bushi can take on apprentices or even a cell of Aonise Bushi at that moment Sasuke decided to speak M.M. Shinobi will always be stronger than a samurai Benisato stopped and turned around no this she replied curtly I've
fought with the samurai they are just as tough as battle-hardened jounin in some cases a samurai can be better suited for a mission rather than a shinobi and vice versa the emperor himself is trained in both the ways of the shinobi and the samurai a fact that you yourself can attest to that painfully sasuke growled benisato had him there for all his talk about being an elite the emperor was clearly stronger than him seeing the uchiha was properly humbled for the time being benisato continued with the tour since today is Friday you guys are in for a treat Benisato said even though we are at peace the Emperor and Empress Consort wants our forces to be razor sharp every Friday we hold local tournaments here in Kimen and in other parts of the Empire we're on our way to the proving grounds now to have a look you guys hold local tournaments Kiba asked now interested Benisato nodded yes it provides free entertainment for the civilians and it also promotes healthy rivalries between samurai. In Shinobi there's also the Imperial Kumite which is held in South Ichiyama every first week in July only the best of the best compete in the Imperial Kumite interesting Sasuke thought as he and the others followed Benisato the proving grounds were Kimen's answer to Kanoa's training grounds used by their Shinobi to hone in their skills located on the outskirts of the Imperial capital the proving grounds was three times the size of training ground number 44 the forest of death the proving grounds was split into four sections. Ground number one was the Enlightenment Grounds in which Samurai and Shinobi meditated in peace with the help of the Shinobi monks who maintained the grounds. Ground number two was the Weapons Grounds where Shinobi and Samurai spar using their various weapons. Ground number three was the Jutsu Grounds where the Shinobi practiced their techniques of course Sasuke tried to use the Sharingan to steal the Jutsu, but found that upon activating his Dojitsu it would automatically cut off he tried again but with the same results Kakashi and unknown to both the last Uchiha and Ataki Danzu tried to do the same with his own hidden Sharingan but with the same results as did the Uchiha and his former sensei last was ground number three which was simply known as the arena located in the heart of the proving grounds the arena was one large area which was clear of trees the arena was closed off on three sides with a series of stands on the three sides a lodge which served as a medical station was located beside the stands on the left hand side to the Kanoa group it reminded them of the Chunin exam stadium in a way a massive let die a circular training platform was placed in the middle of the arena an inscription was written around the let die's edge which read the brave do not fear the grave as the stands were already full of spectators and competitors Benisato and the Kanoa group simply stood to the side and watched as the matches commenced as the tournament continued Asuma and Kakashi had to admit that the Western Shinobi and Samurai were incredibly tough even tougher than their counterparts in Kumo and IWA Sasuke snorted as he dismissed the Western Shinobi and Samurai as weak and unworthy of the power they wielded Koharu and Hanmura were literally drooling salivating as the gears in their heads had went into overdrive. As they continued to watch the tournaments it was true that the West had the muscle but Kanoha in their eyes had the political advantage even though. His face said otherwise Danzu was making plans plans which involve using the Empire Shinobi as fresh recruits for his route A and BU but two of the combatants had caught Jiraiya and the other's attention once they stepped onto the Let Die Rock Lee and Niji Hyuga Benisato watched as Takashi Chiba stepped onto the Let Die him interesting a two-on-one match she news Jiraiya turned to Benisato how the Snake Queen gestured to Takashi who had with a gesture of his hand silently ordered both the Hyuga prodigy and the Gokan expert to step back allowing him to stand in between the two former Kanoa Shinobi Takashi Chiba the elite guards resident Taijutsu master she explained very dangerous very tough not as tough as me though so are those two Jiraiya replied as the fight commenced I'm sure you know that they were once Kanoa Shinobi until recently word gets around Benisato replied as she spied Suncher Hayashi Hyuga Kuda Chiba and Takuma Uzumaki seated together talking in fact it's the big Talk around the empire the emperor has granted the four clan heads and the jounin that had came with them political asylum any idea as to why the emperor would do such a thing Sakura asked granting them asylum and risking the ire of the leaf Jiraiya shot Sakura a glance which told her to shut up he then noticed Hayashi with the other members of the council watching the fight it's confirmed that the emperor and empress consort granted Hayashi and the others asylum so if they are here could he be. 
here as well he thought as he continued to watch the fight between the two former Kanoa Shinobi and Takashi Chiba despite the combined effort of Niji and Rock Lee they were no match for Takashi as he brought the both of them down Red Lotus in Jiraiya's room following the tournament Benisato had taken the Kanoa group back to the Red Lotus and left for her own home Jiraiya had ordered everyone to his room for a quick meeting, in regards as to what they had seen that day Jiraiya however was disappointed at the fact that he could not meet Murasaki Shibuku I can honestly say that I am very impressed with the western shinobi and samurai Asuma said remembering the match between Guy's former pupils and Takashi Chiba Benisato's teammate the taijutsu expert he held his own against Niji and Rock Lee that guy would have been at home with the Fire Lord's Guardian Ninja their training methods for their shinobi and samurai are very impressive Shino said the most logical conclusion is that they combine classroom education and field exercises in order to produce battle-worthy shinobi the Imperial Medic Corps methods as to how they train their medic means Sakura began as she was compiling a series of reports that was to be given to Sanade once she returned to Kanoa Lady Sanade may be one of the best medic means in the history of the elemental nations but not even she could come up with the things I've seen whoever the empress is as much as I hate to say it she could surpass Tsunade in medical knowledge Danzu remained silent but Koharu and Hanmira were trading notes Danzu was troubled the Uzumaki clan was still alive Takuma Uzumaki was still alive his train of thought was interrupted when he overhead Sasuke made his opinion known to his former sensei and to everyone in the room I'm not impressed Hataki these westerners are beneath the leaf they are beneath me an elite if given the chance I would show them all the might of the Uchiha Sasuke remember what I taught you and Sakura Kakashi replied you must look underneath the hidden meanings you may be good given that you trained under myself and Danzu but not even you could face down one of the empire's warriors we both fought the emperor himself and lost the emperor got lucky Sasuke shot back without that title to back him up he is Nothing compared to me now Asuma was getting tired of Sasuke's shit Sasuke shut up Sasuke's head snapped to the Sarutobi clan head what did you say Sarutobi I told you to shut up Asuma snapped rising to his feet hands itching to reach for his trench knives ever since the emperor has beaten you in combat you could not let that go you could not accept the fact that there is someone out there who is stronger than you Sasuke stood up his eyes morphing into the Majenkyu do you have any idea who you are speaking to his snarled hand reaching for his Chikudo someone who has been nothing but trouble for Kanoha Asuma shot back at least that demon brat of a teammate was more loyal than you ever were even though they will not tell you since they worship the ground you walk on but I will all of this is not Uzumaki's fault but yours you tried to run to Orochimaru but the QB brat stopped you despite the fact that you shoved a Chidori into his chest it was because of him we had trade and military alliances and it was because of you that we lost them all and it's because of you that four of our strongest clans and 200 jounin defected from the leaf because of you our place as the strongest in the elemental nations is being threatened by suna the only reason that dobuon is because he had the power of the nine tails backing him up sarutobi remember that sasuke reminded him that's the pot calling the kettle black since you had the power of orochimaru's cursed seal and that was not even enough for you to kill him not to mention that my father the Sanin and the council had purposely stunted his growth so who is stronger the dead last or the elite before leaving the room Asuma left with a parting shot we should have kept the QB brat and banished you instead he stormed out of the room slamming the door behind him Sasuke was seething as the Majenku began to spin that little Sasuke stand down Danza ordered Sarutobi does have a point on the matter regarding the emperor the Rinnegan is indeed stronger than the Sharingan and the fact that the Emperor did not use it in the fight shows that he is indeed a powerful shinobi this is a very dangerous game Sasuke Kanoa's future depends on what happens tomorrow Jiraiya stood up I'll calm Asuma down everyone else go and get some sleep we got a big day tomorrow the following morning Jiraiya and the Kanoa group were having breakfast inside the Red Lotus restaurant the dining area was for the most case deserted as it was a Saturday morning the tension between Sasuke Uchiha and Asuma Sarutobi was still thick from the previous night which is why both men sat on opposite sides of the table Sasuke had not remembered how Asuma had told him that his dead last of a former teammate was worth more than him and vowed to pay the Sarutobi clan head back for that insult shame that his little bastard of a nephew in his cell had died Sasuke thought darkly I would have loved to place them under a Jinjutsu the previous night. 
Sasuke had written off the Imperial forces as weak and unworthy to be in his presence, but it was Koharu and Hanmira who had made Sasuke think otherwise as always like they had done when he was a child they stroked his ego telling him that through this alliance he would learn the Empire's secrets that through the Empire he would become even more powerful powerful enough to even kill Itachi and to prove to his missing teammate that he was indeed the strongest once and for all Sasuke liked that. Idea once he killed Itachi not only would he beat Naruto's head into powder but he would also crush the emperor under his might four people then entered the restaurant the locals who were present knew who they were and were smart enough to keep out of their way these four highly trained shinobi and samurai were one of the empire's elite special forces unit a quartet of s ranked warriors whose bloodlines allowed them to wield the power of the elements of wind earth fire and lightning the same group of fighters who had easily crushed the Akatsuki only the Emperor and Empress matched them in power and skill they were known by several names the Shiteno the four heavenly kings the four devas they walked over to the table where Jiraiya and the others sat Kiba saw them first and alerted Jiraiya and the others to their presence the first member was a mirror image of the Pekora merchant slash imperial spice Achiko Asahina in truth she was her identical twin sister the eldest by five minutes safe that while Sachiko had long hair hers was cut short like her twin sister she wielded the power of the flames, but while Sachiko's flames were red hers were black she was dressed in the standard Jounin uniform of the Imperial Defense Force the black Shizoka uniform over a red Jounin flak vest and Ninjato was strapped to small of her back her Atai 8 was wrapped around her neck her name was Sadako Asahina the mistress of the dark flames. The second member was also female unlike the other three who were traditional shinobi she was the product of a union between a kunoichi and a ronin samurai which meant she was trained in both the ways of the shinobi and samurai meaning that she was part of the samurai ninja warrior class who embraced both styles hailing from the town of shinoku she was a member of an ancient warrior cult who worshipped the deity azura she wore no flak vest with her clothing which consisted of a black bustier black pants and boots dual tantos were stuck inside her boots her dark hair fell behind her back her forehead protector was wrapped around her left leg she looked exotic the clear gray eyes looking down on the Kanoa group with disdain she was the protector of the divine winds Kid Kuriyama the third member was a bald and bearded mountain of a man standing seven feet tall literally a walking mountain of muscle his armor reminded Jiraiya of Han's steam armor. In appearance only difference was that there was no steam aside from the armor he had on a pair of black pants but went barefoot he was the oldest of the group tanned and loved a good fight strapped to his back was a giant broadsword the size of Zabuza's head chopping cleaver like a he wore his tie eight around his bicep he was Kentaro Kagami the strong man of the scorched earth the final member of the group was the leader for a split second given the blonde hair and the blue eyes Jiraiya and the others thought that he was looking at Naruto but this guy was anything but he was wearing armor which reminded both Sakura and Sasuke of Dodo Kasahana's prototype chakra armor but it was red with golden trim rather than Dodo's black with blue trim it wasn't chakra armor but rather armor belonging to his clan over the armor he had on a black Hayori black pants and Sandals completed the outfit as a tie 8 was stitched onto his Hayori he was Reizu the Shogun of the Violent Lightning you know you guys stick out like a sore thumb Reizu began then again I'm not surprised Eastern Shinobi with a death wish welcome to the West tourist stands of frown we are not tourists he rebuked oh come on Reizu replied here you are in our home taking in the sights seeing what the Western Empire have to offer face it you guys. Our tourist Sasuke jumped to his feet activating his. Sharingan now look here Yui backed away as Reizu raised one hand index and middle finger extended ah 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 Reizu child as golden lightning danced on his finger you really should rein in your temper Uchiha otherwise I would have to explain why I had to fry your ass to my boss Sasuke don't Jiraiya warn I've heard of these for these four are the four devas he looked at Reizu this is the one who had defeated Itachi and his partner the old man speaks the truth Reizu confirmed we tagged along with the chief and his wife on an inspection tour to the east the emperor gave us his blessings to test our skills against the Akatsuki so long as we didn't kill any of them he looked at Sasuke so you're Itachi's kid brother I've seen better than again I've seen worse as well how dare you speak to me like that you commoner Sasuke snarled keep running your mouth runt and I'll do to you what I did to your brother Reizu threatened upon hearing Sadako clear her throat Reizu dispersed the lightning oh 
Right you guys are a come with us the emperor and empress consort would like to have a word with you guys we're here just to make sure that everything remains nice and civil and keep your dog under control Sadako warned Kiba otherwise I will be forced to put him down hall of sovereigns council chambers dressed in all black the Kage style hat over his head eyes closed in order to conceal his now active renegade Naruto, sat in his chair trying to calm the emotions that were currently going. Through his mind as Emperor Naruto had the right to refuse any envoy that came before him but he decided to see how far Kanoha had come during his absence Hinata was also present as was Kurama Hayashi was absent Hinata's bangs had covered her eyes effectively hiding them from view the entire council was present as well that and whether or not he could keep his temper in check and not kill his former teammates sensei and godfather for their betrayal the moment they entered the room Naruto was not taking any chances not against the Sharingan he knew that the Rinnegan had the power to repel the Sharingan's Jinjutsu but his council did not share that same ability which is why for the past hour he had placed special anti-Jinjutsu seals on the council and activated them minutes before the Kanoa group had arrived the door opened and Naruto opened his eyes just as the four devas entered the council chambers, followed by Jiraiya Asuma Sarutobi the three elders and the remnants of Cell 7. And eight the four devas stepped to the side allowing the Kanoa group to face the emperor and empress consort Jiraiya and the three elders were surprised to see us seated on the council as one of the emperor's advisors as they had read the reports that Aya's brother and several of their supporters were killed when it was overthrown to Naruto Jiraiya looked the same a backstabbing super pervert Kakashi was all business as the little orange book he usually read was not in sight Sakura was dressed. As a medic mean complete with Jown and Vest Sasuke however was sizing him up Sharingan active looking as arrogant as ever Danzu was doing the same Koharu and Hanmiro looked on with growing anticipation as if they were hoping for Naruto to accept their terms for an alliance Akamiru was growling at Baijamaru the wolf dog growling back until Kiba shushed him looking at Inada he could not shake the fact that the Empress was someone familiar someone he knew very well that and for some strange reason. The red-headed woman seated next to the former rakage smelled strongly of foxes Naruto focused on Danzu aside from Koharu and Hanmira the warhawk had been in his side for the longest ever since his genin days him a hidden Sharingan behind those bandages and he's attempting to use it to try and sway the council good thing those anti-jinjutsu seals I've designed are working and indeed they were working otherwise, Naruto would have sensed the Sharingan's influence on the council members what's. This Naruto thought as he continued to glare at Dan's of the Warhawk is not as crippled as he presents himself a false arm underneath his robes with multiple Sharingans grafted combined with the Mokotan of the Senju clan I wonder how the old hag and that idiot former teammate of mine would take it if I told them that the Warhawk ripped off their respective clan's bloodlines Jiraiya Koharu Hanmira and Danzu stood side by side, and bowed the other Kanoha Shinobi following suit all except Sasuke who smirked at the Imperial Council at his blatant show of disrespect until Kakashi looked up grabbed his former student by the back of the neck and forced him to bow as well Jiraiya began to speak acting as de facto negotiator Lord Emperor may your reign be a long and prosperous once I am Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin Naruto began using his chakra to mask his voice just as he had done with Kabuto one of three shinobi, christened with the title by former Amagekir warlord Hanzo the Salamander. Former teammates include Tsunade Senju and Orochimaru trained by Harusen Sarutobi deceased Sande Mokage of Kanahagakur author of Ika Ika and self-proclaimed super pervert Jiraiya beamed my reputation precedes me I am honored no I just like to be informed of the major players in the east Naruto replied causing Jiraiya's expression to fall the movers and shakers if you will information is a valuable commodity, wouldn't you agree old man I take it that the Hyuga and the Ino Shika Cho notified you about myself and of Kanoa Jiraiya asked we confirmed Hayashi Hyuga and his nephew which means you were the one behind the offer for asylum they verified what we already know Naruto replied like the fact that the shinobi accompanying you of which I can identify from my previous encounters with the leaf are Kakashi Ataki Asuma Sarutobi Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha the one with the giant dog is Kiba Inazuka son of Tsum Inazuka the silent one with the glasses is Shino Aburame and the pale skin one is Sai he looked at the elders but I do not know these three enlighten me we are the elders of Kanahagakura no Sato Danzu began I am Danzu Shimura Hanmira continued the introduction I am Hanmira Midokado and I am Koharu Yudatane Koharu finished we are here on behalf the Godemo Kage Tsunade Senju the people of Kanahagakura no Sato and the Lord of Fire Country Jiraiya continued 
we have come here in good faith to speak to both you Lord Emperor and Lady Empress Go on Anata. Said her chakra masking her voice both Kanoha and Fire Country interest in the unified West as well as the both of you Jiraiya began from what the Pekora merchants have told us you two were only teenagers when you decided to unify the lands a respectable feat it was at that time Sasuke decided to speak HN two years. To unify the lands had it been me I would have done it in less time seeing as how I am an Uchiha and elite looks like his ego is still as big as tears point Naruto thought as he cocked one eyebrow the guards present looked amused Jiraiya looked like he wanted to strangle the Uchiha if Asuma did not beat him to at first claiming such a title without being capable of backing it up it is very dangerous in these parts Uchiha Naruto countered his eyes staring down the last Uchiha from his seat they don't last long here in the west here we prove ourselves with actions not words here respect is not given because of what clan you're from or what bloodline you wield it is earned. Oh, and would you deactivate your Sharingan I would hate to have you arrested for crimes against the unified west such as the attempted murder of the emperor by Jinjutsu Sasuke began to retort, but Kakashi's hand on his shoulder restrained him as well as a glare from Jiraiya Sasuke grunted before. Deactivating the Sharingan you should try teaching the Uchiha some tact Naruto noted dryly I apologize for my student Kakashi said as I was saying Jiraiya continued Major Minazuki was nice enough to give us a tour of the capital and I can say on behalf of the envoy and myself we are very impressed with the empire's methods there is so much that the unified west and the leaf can share provide that we can sign a political and military alliance between your empire and Kanagaku or no Sato there is so much that we can learn from one another you could learn from the best in politics and we can trade techniques and the like and that you would be gaining quite a valuable ally in the leaf naruto leaned back in his seat one finger tapping the armrest of his throne as if he was thinking about agreeing to the proposed alliance no no jiraiya repeated no naruto repeated being allied to the leaf is not in the best interest of the unified west not after what i had discovered through the suna representatives what Gara and the San siblings told you is false Kakashi explained Kanoha is the strongest of the shinobi villages the will of fire is strong with the people we hold many powerful shinobi within our ranks so the fact that Kanagaku rewards potential traitors and damn their potential heroes was false Naruto asked watching as Kakashi and Jiraiya stiffened slightly that Kanoha had lost every single alliance because they decided to throw in their lot with a genin who willingly defected from Kanoha for the promise of power and banish a loyal shinobi for doing his job how do you know that Sakura demanded Naruto smiled Jiraiya's information network is not the only spy network in town I have eyes and ears in the west as well spring country also verified your actions as did mist but most of what I know about Kanoha and its shinobi came from one person from within my ranks I believe you know him as he was your former godson Jiraiya as well as being the former teammate for Cell 7 Naruto Uzumaki Naruto watched as Jiraiya shifted uncontrollably Kakashi frowned as did the three elders Sasuke looked smug so the dobe is still alive figures that you would have someone as weak as him fighting for you weak hardly the emperor replied mildly he is a hero in the west be careful who you insult little man Takuma Uzumaki warned the Uzumaki take care of their own as gaze turned ice cold as he leveled it upon Jiraiya and you you and the Godain betrayed my nephew your Godson Tsunade was his great aunt and chose the leaf over blood we believe in loyalty to one's village but family is also important Takuma calm down Naruto ordered Takuma complied do you know that he is the QB reborn Kakashi butted and did you know that he is wanted in the bingo book for murdering my sensei and his wife not to mention that he is charged with treason for harming a clan heir funny I thought Uzumaki was a clan heir Naruto replied his father was your village hero and his mother was the former princess of Whirlpool as to the charges of treason and harming a clan heir those charges are false as he was banished which means you can't charge him with treason second your precious Uchiha had willingly ran off to join Orochimaru in any case Uzumaki was following orders that demon brat is no heir Kakashi snapped he is just a fox in human skin no one noticed the vein pulsing on Karama's head or the fact that her hand was balling into a fist it's obvious that despite being the Student of the Yellow Flash you know jack shit about Fuenjutsu Naruto continued the boy is a Jinchuriki the jailer and warden not the prisoner itself and under the unified west he is a powerful warrior admired and respected by friend and foe alike he pointed to Kakashi those who abandon the mission are trash but those who abandon their comrades are lower than trash your words according to Uzumaki for favoring a traitor and not giving Uzumaki the proper tutelage you Kakashi Ataki are lower. 
Then trash in my eyes you and Sasuke Uchiha are scum you dare call me scum Sasuke snarled activating his Sharingan you and your whore are nothing compared to me you both hide behind your precious titles I am an elite among elite that was all that Sasuke could get out before the emperor and empress consort vanished a split second later the Uchiha prince felt the unmistakable touch of cold steel against his neck along with the second blade, resting up against his crotch followed by a massive dose of killer intent so potent that it even froze Jiraiya and the others in place only the council the guards present and Karama were unaffected impossible Jiraiya thought as he fell to his knees what what power they're both faster than Minato you call yourself an elite and yet your Sharingan could not track our movements Naruto deadpanned Okatana in hand and against Sasuke's neck I had hoped that our last encounter left you humbled but now I see that it has done nothing you have any idea who you are dealing with Sasuke managed to spit out to you the Empress retorted her own cookery against the Uchiha's balls look at where my husband and I are and look at you for all your talk of being an elite you are nothing but a second rate ninja hiding behind your family name and dojitsu know this Sasuke Uchiha Naruto continued I can kill you right now my wife can kill you right now you are nothing but an insect that can be crushed under my heel that and you are really trying my patience keep your tongue in check or I will remove it from your mouth and I will remove what makes you a man Hanada finished that caused Kiba Kakashi Asumashino and even the male elders to wince at Hanada's meaning the threat properly delivered the emperor and empress of the western empire returned to their chairs lifting the killer intent as they did so regardless of what you may think Jiraiya said you have confirmed that the QB Jinchuriki is here in the unified west he is a missing ninja and A.S class threat to both Kanoha and to fire country with all due respect I ask that you turn him over to us so that he can be taken back to the leaf to face our justice there is also the matter of two of the clan heiresses which had abandoned Kanoha and had made their way here along with their families Kakashi continued Ino Yamanaka and Hanabi Hyuga as Sasuke is under the Kanahagakur clan restoration act we demand on behalf of the Kanahagakur high council that they both be turned over to us so that they could be returned and married to Sasuke Uchiha with all haste we also request that you hand over Tenten and Anko Midarashi as well for they both fall under the CRA in regards to surrendering Uzumaki to you the answer is no Naruto replied leaking out killer intent and in regards to Yamanaka and the Hyuga not to mention the other two again the answer is no as I have granted them and their family's political asylum as well as citizenship within the unified west you nor Kanoha are in no position to make demands of myself and of my empire Jiraiya puffed out his chest you will regret this lord emperor you will not like Kanoha as your enemy in any case I seriously would not want you nor Kanoha as allies either the emperor replied for your insolence you will be sent back on the first ship back to the east thank whatever gods you worship that I do not send your bodies back to Kanoha in six or seven pieces along with a declaration of war on your village and on fire country when it looked like Sasuke was going to retort Naruto added choose your words carefully Uchiha for they will be your last Kakashi clamped down his hand on Sasuke's mouth Sasuke know you got us into enough trouble already he hissed calm down as he is your prized student you should teach him some manners when in the presence of someone higher up than he is Naruto replied with a wave of his hand he said leave my sight Kanagakura no Sato two weeks later upon returning to Kanoha Jiraiya had dismissed Asuma Sarutobi Sasuke Uchiha and Cell 8 leaving himself Kakashi Sakura and the two elders to face both Tsunade and the Fire Lord Danzu returned to his own compound ignoring Jiraiya's request to remain with the others inside the Hokage's office Tsunade Senju looked over the reports given to her by Sakura Koharu and Hanmura also present was the Fire Lord who had taken quite an interest in Kanoa's attempts to get the Unified West in their corner so their medical program uses both Shinobi and Samurai very interesting it also confirmed what Captain Sarutobi said about their medic means Sakura said their healing methods as much as I hate to admit far surpass those of the Leaf and their combat medics are just as skilled despite being Samurai and not knowing any Jutsu indeed Tsunade murmured as she scanned through the report acupuncture needles and Shiatsu herbology most impressive and to think that the empress has created such a well-organized program for both shinobi and samurai their education and training is impressive the fire demio said as he read koharu and hanura's reports the empire using both shinobi and samurai and his forces on top of that they can produce chunin and jounin in less time than we can tsunade set the scroll down so what happened did the emperor and his wife agree to an alliance with us jiraiya shook his head they 
refused to ally with us on top of that Sasuke's attitude and mouth did not help matters either he insulted both the emperor and his wife calling her a whore and nearly lost his head and his ball Sonate fumed that foolish boy he almost started a war because of his ego the emperor and his wife showed plenty of restraint and not killing Sasuke where he stood let alone Castri and Kakashi seconded and despite the both of them holding back most of their chakra their power level is for lack of a better word insane the Uchiha will be reprimanded for this offense Sonade said he will be placed under house arrest and will not leave Kanai the Kur until I see fit I second the motion the fire Demio said the emperor is an unknown and that makes him even more dangerous Sasuke Uchiha is becoming uncontrollable and has been ever since Uzumaki's banishment he needs to be humbled Lord Demio we must treat the Uchiha with great care Koharu said in Sasuke's defense as he is the last loyal Uchiha of Kanoha we need the Sharingan and yet the Emperor from what I found out has a bloodline similar to that of the Six Path Sage which makes the Sharingan obsolete the Fire Demio replied curtly I had pardoned him the first time when he tried to defect from Kanoha I will not be as merciful should he try to defect a second time to Jiraiya and Kakashi he said continue we have confirmed not only does the Emperor has the Renegan, but he did reveal to us one key bit of information regarding Naruto. Uzumaki reported Kakashi Sanade leaned forward in her chair please tell me that the brat is dead Jiraiya shook his head no according to the emperor Uzumaki is alive from the look of things he fought alongside the emperor in the wars unifying the continent meaning that the brat could have learned how to control his demon Danzu surmised or that he has learned how to fight more effectively from the emperor despite our sabotaging his training at the academy and Ataki not teaching him anything. Other than chakra control he turned to Sonade we could have avoided this a long time ago had Sarutobi given him to me to train there's more Sonade Jiraiya continued the Uzumaki clan is not extinct I saw Takuma Uzumaki in the west impossible the Uzumaki is gone Sonade rebuffed I saw the reports the Uzumaki had been wiped out it looks like that Kushina was not entirely honest with us the toad sage replied mildly my guess is that she ordered Takuma to evacuate Whirlpool and to take as many survivors as he can even worse the Uzumaki is one of the main clans in the empire which means that the clan has rebuilt and is more powerful than it was back in the last shinobi war hell he's part of the emperor's staff as one of his advisors and he knows what we had done to his nephew not to mention the fact that you are his great aunt i can care less what takuma thinks Tsunade replied flatly naruto killed the closest thing i had to a daughter kushino was his sister he should hand naruto over to us so we can finish what Minato had started better yet he should kill the brat himself so what do we do about the QB brat Koharu demanded we know that he is there in the west we should at least try and retrieve him by using the ANBU the fire Demio shook his head no if the emperor finds out that we were responsible for such an action given Uzumaki's he could declare war not only on Kanoha but he could wipe out all of fire country in retaliation we can't sit here and do nothing Koharu pleaded if the QB brat is in the good graces of the emperor then he may turn his attention to us next only if we provoke him the demio replied that means do not provoke in any shape form of fashion anyone from the west that comes here especially those from the pekora merchant house and sasuke uchiha is not to say anything about what has happened in the unified west under threat of permanent expulsion from the shinobi forces and his sharingan sealed am i clear the assembled ninja nodded Kakashi disappearing in order to find his student and tell him of the Fire Lord's edict underneath Kanahagakura no Sato Sanade has reprimanded Sasuke for his actions back in the West Koharu said as she Danzu and Hanmiro walked down the corridors of Danzu's underground complex Sai remained behind the trio as of this moment the Uchiha is under house arrest and cannot leave the village Sanade knows that Sasuke falls under my jurisdiction Danzu replied only I can decide his punishment Unfortunately she has the backing of the Fire Lord Hanmira said which means that his authority overrides your own the Emperor and his council should have agreed to the alliance Danza thought Kotoe Matsukami should have made sure of that could it be the power of the Rinnegan on top of that the Uzumaki clan lives the Emperor has refused to join with us Hanmira said so now what do we do there is no way around it Danza replied if the Empire refuses to join us then it is a threat to the leaf and if the empire decides to join our enemies that is a risk that we cannot take I have been planning for something like this in the event that the empire refused to come to our side such as Koharu began a decapitation strike Danzu explained cut off the head of the snake and the body dies the empire is only held together by the emperor and his wife remove them from the equation and the empire will revert back into its warlike state at the same time we kidnap some of the empire's top prospects and 
bring them back here in order to strengthen the leaf if you do this Hamira said then eliminate the traitors to the leaf and their heirs no one betrays Kanoa Takuma Uzumaki is also a threat Koharu said he must die as well fair enough Sai the ink user stepped forward and knelt before the warhawk lord Danza Danzu pulled out a scroll after several moments of scribbling he closed it and handed it to his subordinate this is AS class, black ops mission for the good of the village you will return. To Kimmon with two squads of Root A and BU there two weeks from now you will eliminate the Emperor as whore and the Imperial Council they are your primary targets your secondary targets are the four clan heads the Hyuga the Inoshika Cho and their heirs last you are to eliminate Takuma Uzumaki Sayan not it understood Lord Shimura your will shall be done two weeks later at the Red Lotus in midnight in the Imperial Capital. Inside his room at the Red Lotus and Sai was making the final preparations for his mission and had taken two weeks of covert preparation but he and the two squads of Route A and BU who had came in disguised as tourists from the east were primed and ready to strike at the heart of the imperial nation unfortunately for Sai the innkeeper had recognized Sai from his previous visit with Jiraiya and the Kanahagakura envoy and notified his wife minutes later Fu had delivered word that Sai had returned the innkeeper began to report a rising number of tourists coming from the elemental countries which had set off an automatic red flag to the Imperial Council when it became clear that Danzu had sent Sai and a hit squad of Route A and BU to assassinate the senior Imperial hierarchy Naruto quickly reacted which is why as Sai finished making the preparations one squad of the Demon Brigade led by Haku while the second squad of Hellcats led by Yujitoni quickly and quietly intercepted the would-be assassins incapacitated them and had them brought to the imperial complex for further questioning with Sai's hit squad incapacitated Naruto would deal with the ink user himself a gentle knock on Sai's door had interrupted the ink user from his preparations curious as to who would be at his door at this time of night he walked over to the door and opened it and found himself face to face with the emperor of the united west hello Sai. Naruto deadpan wham Sai dropped like a sack of potatoes the end result of Naruto's fist bouncing off his skull stepping to the side Naruto allowed three Hellcats to enter the room once Sai was searched and properly restrained one of the Hellcats began to search Sai's belongings and came across the mission scroll chief I found something she said handing the scroll to Naruto just as Haku and Yujito approached the emperor all of the root A and BU has been restrained Yujito reported what's that A? Hit list Naruto replied and Hanada and myself are on the top of the list he closed the scroll and turned to Haku Haku go to North Kimen and bring me Hayashi Hanabi and both generations of the Inoshika show I want them at the Imperial Complex in no less than 15 minutes they need to know about this Haku nodded and rushed off to obey Imperial Complex minutes later Hayashi was not very happy. When he was roused from his sleep then again neither were the Inoshika Cho or their heirs but Haku said that it was urgent and that it had something to do with all of them upon reaching the imperial complex the site that greeted the four clan heads and their children shocked them in the courtyard where 20 bound shinobi anyone from Kanoha recognized them as part of the A and BU, particularly those from Danza's private security corps they were being guarded by Yujito's Hellcat's blades drawn ready to kill the intruders Kurama was in her fox form about the size of a horse her nine tails waving lazily in the air she was resting on her haunches but watching the events rather closely last was Naruto and Inada who was talking with Abenasado Takuma and several members of the council Inada had noticed that her father and the others had arrived and pulled her husband away from A and the others you came good Naruto said he gestured to Sai and the bound root A and BU recognize these men you should as they belong to Danza's root A and BU he pulled out the mission scroll and tossed it to Shikaku Sai had this on him the lazy Nara head opened the scroll and read it Hayashi Inoichi and Chuza all crowded in around Shikaku in order to read it Hayashi looked up in disbelief this is a hit list he said disbelief written on his face very troublesome Shikaku said it's from the three council elders the emperor and his wife top the list as does Takuma Uzumaki the imperial council and Asino's eyes widened that old bastard tried to kill all of us she whispered my guess is that the Hokage Jiraiya and the Council does not know about this black ops the blood and the motive right in your hands Nara Naruto said if they penned it in snake venom I wouldn't be surprised to which he turned to Benisato and said no offense Benisato smiled meanly none taken chief my guess is neither the perf nor the hag know about this but I have to be sure before I plan my next move Naruto said he turned to Inoichi Inoichi Ino you're both up Inoichi and his daughter both nodded and walked over to Sai who started to 
struggle the seals on his tongue kept him from talking about Kanoa, but he was defenseless against the Yamanaka's mind jutsu. Two Hellcats quickly restrain him leaving him helpless. Father and daughter stood before Sai, and after taking a deep breath each raised one hand and placed it on Sai's head, and they saw everything Tsunade has reprimanded Sasuke for his actions back in the west as of this moment the Uchiha is under house arrest, and cannot leave the village Tsunade knows that Sasuke falls. Under my jurisdiction only I can decide his punishment unfortunately she has the backing of the Fire Lord which means that his authority overrides your own the Emperor has refused to join with us so now what do we do there is no way around it if the Empire refuses to join us then it is a threat to the Leaf and if the Empire decides to join our enemies that is a risk that we cannot take I have been planning for something like this, in the event that the Empire refused to come to our side such as. A decapitation strike cut off the head of the snake and the body dies the empire is only held together by the emperor and his wife remove them from the equation and the empire will revert back into its warlike state at the same time we kidnap some of the empire's top prospects and bring them back here in order to strengthen the leaf if you do this then eliminate the traitors to the leaf and their heirs no one betrays Kanoa Takuma Uzumaki is also a threat he must die as well fair enough Sai. Lord Danza this is a S-class black ops mission for the good of the village you will return to Kimmon with two squads of Route A and BU there two weeks from now you will eliminate the Emperor is whore and the Imperial Council they are your primary targets your secondary targets are the four clan heads the Hyuga the Inoshika Cho and their heirs last you are to eliminate Takuma Uzumaki. Understood Lord Shimura your will shall be done in Oichi and Ino broke the jutsu and snapped his hand back shocked and horrified Anoichi turned to Naruto and Inada Danzu and the two elders he whispered they ordered our deaths they wanted to kill all of us Ino in the meantime fought the urge to throw up that's all I need to hear Naruto said Hinata turned to Haku take them to Zabuza Anko and Ibiki she ordered in a voice that could freeze hell over while Naruto handed him a second scroll detailing how to remove the seals on the roots tongues four of them is more than enough for interrogation purposes execute the rest tell them that for these for the kid gloves are off nothing is out of bounds at a bar and grill and Kim and Zabusa Mamachi and Ibiki Marino stopped in mid drink is it just me or do I have this sudden urge to kiss the Empress consort full on the mouth all of a sudden Zabusa asked yeah Ibiki seconded it suddenly feels a lot like Christmas all of a sudden at a nearby dango stand Anko Midarashi stopped in mid bite a psychotic smile crept across her lips as she found herself loving her job with the Imperial Interrogation and Torture Unit back inside the Imperial Complex before Haku took them away Naruto turned to Sai and bent low enough to whisper into his ear remember this day Sai remember in the little time you have left that you tried to kill Naruto Uzumaki and failed Sai's eyes went as wide as saucers the Emperor was the QB Jinchuriki was the last thing he thought before being taken away so now what do we do Hayashi asked Naruto turned to his father and why I think. A personal visit to Kanoha is in order not to be a total buskill chief Shikamaru pointed out but you really are not one of Tsunade's favorite people you forget who I am Shikamaru Naruto replied I am the unpredictable one since the old hag is not responsible this time around I'll leave her out of this his expression dark and Sarutobi's two teammates are past their time for retirement I'm going to see to that personally for Hayashi and the three clan heads and their heirs they made a mental note. Note. Do no piss Naruto and Hinata off ever Kanahagakura no Sada one week later following a meeting with Danzu Koharu and Hanmira had returned to their separate homes when asked about the Kimin mission Danzu had replied that Sai had not brought back word of the mission status but the Warhawk was not worried Sai was one of his best operatives the Root ANBU who had went with him were the pick of the litter Danzu had no worries that Sai would be successful in his mission to decapitate the Imperial Hierarchy Hanmira reached his home first he had lived in a modest two-story home in Kanoa's residential district five houses down from Koharu following the Kanoa exodus he decided a change in living quarters was in order he had his eyes on the Nara ranch but the Hyuga compound looked very promising as midnight approached Hanmira entered his home despite not being an active shinobi in decades. Hanmira could tell that something was amiss either that or he was starting to get paranoid in his old age from the shadows Naruto Namikaze watched his target using the demon's gate jutsu he had arrived in Tanzuka town far enough from Kanoha rather than using a hench to disguise himself Naruto instead wore the ANBU uniform pilfered from one of the root ANBU who had tried to kill him along with Sai only this time he wore a kitsune mask to hide his face sneaking into Kanoha was easy enough. 
security in Kanoha was incredibly lax as they had gotten complacent in their abilities he had toyed with the idea of killing both Sasuke and Itaki but decided against it Sasuke still had some use to him alive and Zabuza wanted to take Kakashi's head himself so he decided to check out the town using the Rinnegan he spied on his former cellmates the remnants of the Shinobi Council. In the civilians no Jinjutsu he was not aware of even Jiraiya and Tsunade did not show signs of being under any type of Jinjutsu as night fell he had inside the Namakaze estate the seals allowing him access as he was of the Namakaze line to kill time before his personal mission he even reinforced the seals so that Jiraiya could not break them with his father's home secured in the midnight hour approaching Naruto began his mission when Hanura entered his home he had sealed his fate Naruto knew he had to make his death look like either an accident or natural causes or else Tsunade and the others would know that something is amiss he knew that Koharu had heart problems and had her already taken care of for Hanmira however he decided on a more straightforward approach Hanmira began to ascend the stairs which led to the second floor of his home imagine his shock and horror when upon reaching the second floor landing that a kitsun masked ANBU emerged from the shadows grabbed him by his shirt and had him hanging on his tiptoes over the stairs the only thing keeping him from falling to his death was the ANBU's iron grip on his shirt with his other hand Naruto removed the kitsune mask allowing the elder to get a good look of his face recognize me now Mitokado I guess not it has been 6 years since I was banished Hanmira's eyes went wide you Uzumaki he gasped you can call me Emperor Naruto replied enjoying the look of sheer terror on the elder's face oh yes I know about Danza's little plot to have myself killed along with my wife the council my uncle and the clan heads who defected I also know that you and Koharu supported this little scheme don't worry Koharu will be joining you in death soon enough it wasn't enough for you to kick me out of this cesspool for doing my job now you and those two relics try and pull this stunt Naruto please Hanmura pleaded I'm sorry we did what we thought was best I know that you're sorry councilman Naruto's eyes then shifted into the Rinnegan but for the sake of argument let's pretend that you are not with that Naruto released Hanmura who fell backwards screaming as he fell down the stairs the scream stopped when Naruto heard the unmistakable sound of a neck snapping the now dead councilman landed in a mangled heap on the first floor walking down the stairs Naruto inspected the body Hanmura was dead his neck twisted at an unnatural angle if the broken neck did not kill him then the cracked skull most certainly did the pool of blood pooling around his head one down Naruto thought as he secured his kits and mask and vanished via Shunshin Koharu's home minutes later Koharu Yudatain sat at her table sipping at her tea it was her favorite jasmine petal and has been since her days in team Tobarama she had been worried that Sai had not sent word or returned from the west and he was due back days ago Koharu was always a realist in some cases even more so than Danzu and Hanmura she had always believed that Kanoha was the strongest of the shinobi villages she also believed that the elders should rule the leaf and that the position of Hokage should be in most cases abolished well not abolished but the Hokage would be more of a figurehead only problem was that Tsunade was gaining more power and influence with the council she continued to sip at her tea as an ANBU wearing a kitsune mask appeared from the shadows Koharu wasn't worried as she assumed that the ANBU was one of Danza's pets and that if the root was inside her home then that means that Danza had an update on the Kimin mission I take it that Danza has sent you to give me an update on the mission into the empire koharu asked she was most surprised when the anbu pulled up a chair and sat down across from here no the anbu replied right before removing his mask showing koharu his face koharu's eyes widened the anbu seated before her looked a lot like minato namikaze but with kushina uzumaki's hair color her eyes narrowed slightly before they widened in realization as to who was seated across from her naruto uzumaki the one and only you old bitch Naruto replied Koharu continued to sip at her tea so you decided to show yourself after Sai and the root ANBU murdered your beloved emperor Koharu snorted is that a demon some sort of misguided revenge you'd think that wouldn't you Naruto replied for the record Sai failed in his quest the emperor is still alive so you know him then I should Naruto replied eyes shifting into the Rinnegan the emperor is me Yudatane and Ata Hyuga is my wife Koharu put the pieces together hiding her shock that the demon of Kanoha was the most powerful man in the west it was through your wife that the clan heads and their children were allowed asylum that and the fact that out of all the clans in this village the Hyuga and the Inoshika Cho trio saw me as what my parents wanted the entire village to see me as a hero their children does not see me as a demon by granting them asylum into my empire I am merely repaying them for their kindness towards me so Sai failed Koharu murmured as she calmly sipped at 
Her tea what now easy Naruto replied I came here to watch you die bold words demon brat Koharu replied acidly you kill me and then what you won't make it out of Kanoha let alone fire country she began to cough Tsunade will see to that the old hag can't see past her sake bottle Naruto replied as to the part where I kill you I did that 30 minutes ago. Before I paid your teammate a visit Koharu blinked then she felt the pain in her chest she began to gasp for air the teacup falling from her hands and smashed upon impacting the floor her coughing grew even more violent up to the point where she was coughing up blood she stumbled to her feet and began to stumble around the room all the while Naruto calmly sat in his chair feel the pain in your chest do you Naruto taunted the shortness of breath and the feeling of impending doom you met my captain of my elite guard back in Kim and the Minazuki clan also specialize in various types of poisons Benisato was more than happy to assist in my personal mission the poison you ingested through your tea basically causes you to go into a myocardial infarction in other words you're having a heart attack you bastard Koharu gasped the poison is also untraceable and will leave your system upon your death Naruto continued your death will be written off as heart failure given your past medical history with your bad heart oh and don't worry about your precious Uchiha I won't kill him yet he still have a use for me he will be the catalyst for Kanoa's disruption Koharu let out a cry as she keeled over her body twitching violently before laying still the death rattle escaping from her lips give my regards to Aruzen Naruto deadpanned as he retrieved his mask and slipped it back on two down underneath Kanahagakura Danza Shimura walked down the corridors of his underground root compound having dismissed both Koharu and Hanmira Danzu retired deeper into his underground chambers he shared the same concerns as did Koharu and Hanmira but he was not as worried as they were Sai was his best man and had never let him down just yet he would have sent Sasuke to lead the mission but decided against it he had big plans for his Uchiha involving Kanoha such a shame Danza thought as he headed to his office the Empire would have been a worthy ally to the leaf shame that they had refused to join us but this has to be done to make sure that they do not join our enemy Sai will not fail me he does not know how to fail when he entered his office he was greeted with a horrific sight resting on his desk was Sai's head drain of blood looking even more pale eyes gouged out tongue ripped out the face locked in a mask of eternal pain the cane clattered to the floor as Danzu stumbled forward Several steps then fell to his knees as the totality had struck him in full force Sai was dead as most loyal root operative was dead it was at that moment Danzer realized that he could not move looking down at the floor he saw that he was on an advanced looking seal wh what is this magnificent isn't it Danza turned his head Naruto emerged from the shadows still dressed as an ANBU the Kitson mask. Hiding his face Rinnegan active in one hand was the tipless Tonto the ANBU used for their primary. Weapons few and jutsu is a very interesting art wouldn't you agree old man Danza looked at the eyes and saw the Rinnegan you the Emperor Naruto grin got it in one Shimura he gestured to the seal that Danzu was on just because I am a leader does not mean that unlike you who lead from the shadows and believes that all shinobi are tools I can get my hands dirty that seal is of my own design if I can be so modest. The seal is designed to drain you of your chakra and nullify any type of dojitsu. Offensive and defensive seals you have on your person and various bloodline based abilities the more you resist the more painful it will be so to recap your mission failed I'm still alive as is my wife the council is still alive Takuma Uzumaki is still alive oh and the four clan heads and their heirs are alive as well he gestured to Sai's head removing the seal from Sai's tongue was pretty easy. He and the three other root A and B U we kept alive for interrogation purposes gave us some pretty useful information well that and where you keep your dirty little secrets at naruto said holding up a black book which had all of danza's past crimes written inside with great detail i know that you and sarutobi's former teammates orchestrated this little mission midokado and yudatane had paid for this offense with their lives naruto continued a broken neck with a cracked skull for hanmura and a heart attack for koharu terrible business i also know that you have a sharingan behind those bandages and that you tried to use it to persuade the council into agreeing into the alliance with Kanoa Naruto continued like I said Fuenjutsu is a very interesting art especially when used to repel Jinjutsu he tapped at the fake arm hidden inside his robes I also know about the special arm with the multiple Sharingans and the Senju DNA grafted to you now how would your little Uchiha pet and the old hag of Hokage would react if they somehow find out that you ripped off their clan's respective 
Bloodlines Mo I destroyed your reserves by the way you have any idea what you have done Dan's a graded furious Naruto continued to twist the knife I also know that you conspired with the Uchiha in their attempted coup but when Itachi notified Sarutobi that forced your hand I also know that you sold out the Uzumaki clan and Whirlpool to her enemies in the last war good thing that the Yandame's wife did not trust you as the Uzumaki fled west you also conspired with Hanzo the Salamander. In Dodo Kasahana the devil's hands have been very busy for your crimes I can just as easily kill you like I did to the other two I can just as easily do to Koono what you tried to do to my empire. Kill the Godame that super pervert of a teammate I can just as easily execute the Kanoha council wipe out the shinobi clans and their heirs better yet I could have Naruto Uzumaki come back and unleash the nine tails upon this village but I'm in a merciful mood and I will spare them since they are. Innocent for the time being your life will also be spared so you can bear witness Kanai the Kuro no Sato will fall by my hands he pocketed Danza's Black Ops book in the meantime I will keep this to make sure you keep your mouth shut so listen and listen good if you or anyone else from the leaf attack my homeland my people or my interests I will return with my army Naruto rose from his feet and exited the office but not before incinerating Sai's head with a flame jutsu 30 minutes later the seal which kept Danzu in place was gone, and the old warhawk collapsed onto the ground by the time he was able to move under his own power Naruto was long gone having used the demon's gate jutsu to safely return to the empire later on that day inside the council chamber Tsunade had reported the passing of both Kohari Yudatane and Hanmiro Mitokado with their deaths Danzu had lost his top two backers but his hands were tied. If he told Tsunade what he knew then the emperor would literally unleash hell on Kanoha, and before that both Tsunade and Sasuke would kill him for stealing their respective bloodlines flashback ruins of Yuzushiobakure no Sato Whirlpool Country three days earlier Kage style hat covering his face dressed in his standard shinobi uniform with black flak vest and Hayori Naruto was ready for a fight the four devas Kentaro Rezu Sadako and Kid flanked their emperor. As the Akatsuki emerged from the shadows opposite of the imperial group first was Sasuke's brother Itachi. Uchiha's partner Kisame Hashigaki stood beside him sizing up Kentaro and his massive broadsword but Naruto knew that the walking sushi plate was still smarting from when he had taken Yutakata from both him and the Uchiha next were the zombie brothers Haydn and Kakuzu the last time around Sadako had fought Haydn while Reizu fought the miserly Kazuku the last time around Kakuzu had three of his five hearts destroyed, while Haydn was nearly burnt to a crisp last was the one whose actions had put his life into motion his father's former student Hataki's former teammate Abito Uchiha Sasori and Daidara were absent as they were back in aim with Conan and Nagato the Akatsuki mastermind watched the emperor and the four devas with a wary calculating eye Abito was furious that this upstart had intercepted the Jinchuriki this bringing the moon I planned to a screeching halt but he also knew that the emperor was an unknown wielding the same dojitsu he had implanted into Nagato and these four Warriors who stood alongside the Emperor were in most cases even stronger than the Akatsuki Abito took a seat on another overturned pillar and faced the Emperor looking around the ruins for a moment he turned his attention back to the Emperor so you're the Emperor of the West I assume good assumption Naruto replied and you are the supposed leader of this motley crew of S-class missing mean I am Abito, confirmed you know you are not what I expected from someone who has united the West I was. Expecting someone much older sorry to disappoint you Naruto said Abito folded his arms across his chest where are the Jinchuriki safe within the empire safe from those who wish to use them as weapons but most importantly safe from you and your plans I seek only to bring about an everlasting peace Abito said you and I are the same only difference is your method of peace involves robbing the people of their free will Naruto said oh yes I know all about Operation Moon I even though he could not. See it Abito's I narrowed how do you know about that there is not a whole lot I don't know about the plan the emperor replied or about you for that matter I know that Toby is not your real name I also know that Madara Uchiha is dead as a doornail and that you are certainly not in one hand reached up and removed the Kage style hat had it not been for the hair color. Being different he would have been a spitting image of Minato Namikaze it did give both Abito and Itachi a cause for alarm Minato. Impossible Abito said taken aback you you died yon name you live Itachi whispered wrong on both counts Naruto said looking at Abito we have met before I was but a newborn only several minutes old you came for the nine tails that was inside my mother you just did not expect my father to seal the fox inside of me didn't you Abito Uchiha Itachi blinked the head of the Akatsuki was a fellow clan. 
Member thought to have died Abito ignored the fallen Uchiha prodigy as he focused on Naruto Naruto Uzumaki you've grown that I agree Naruto replied despite Sarutobi's attempts to stunt my growth despite the fact that they pissed on my father's final wishes and despite the betrayal of my former cell and my godparents yes I have grown without the village. To hold me back I have grown indeed strong enough to become the emperor of the west Atachi noted I'll say Hayden seconded who knew the little. Fucker could reach such potential so much blood he had spilled in order to get to where he is Jashin would have been pleased amazing what hard work can do something that your brother has failed to realize Naruto said causing Itachi to wince slightly but what I want to know is this you were part of my father's cell why did you betray my father let's get one thing straight Abito replied defensively I had nothing but the utmost respect for Minato both as a shinobi and as a leader even after Madara had shown me the truth in regards to the Uchiha and the Senju I still respected him because he gave me a chance but in the end he was so damn honorable even going as far as to seal the fox inside your body as he would not want no other child to be subject to the life of a Jinchuriki the masked man paused for a moment their deaths were but a minor setback for the greater plans of the Akatsuki but you on the other hand have brought what Madara wanted what I wanted in danger you may call Operation Moon's I what you want, but all I want is a world free of war of suffering and end to the tears with the Uchiha leading the world in an era of so-called peace Naruto snorted better us than the Senju Abito rebuked you yourself can bear witness to that Naruto I know that Tsunade was your great aunt as well as your godmother I know she blames you for your mother's death just as Jiraiya blames you for the death of Minato, you have gotten strong even stronger than Sasuke even without the Fox you have gotten stronger in effect you owe me I made you what you are today if it wasn't for me you would be stagnating in Kanagakura no Sato just like Sasuke is right now and it would be a shame to have you as my enemy when I can have you as my ally instead Naruto cocked an eyebrow your father was my teacher Abito continued I can be a teacher to you a mentor I can show you how to master the Rinnegan to master the six paths you have the potential to become even greater than your father than the other Hokages before and after him you becoming Emperor of the West is proof of that join me Naruto join me and we can lift the web of lies we can crush the leaf once and for all you have an interesting point Naruto said but I must decline as your crimes are two great crimes what crimes Abito asked Naruto ticked off Abito's offenses on his fingers you used the Sharingan on Yagura and incited a bloodline purge upon the innocent people of mist in an attempt to eliminate those who would be a threat to the Uchiha and the Sharingan in the long run you tried to use the Jinchuriki the closest I have as brothers and sisters in a plan for world domination but your greatest crime is that you robbed me of my parents he stood up my parents know that it was you who had done this they also know about the Sanin's betrayal so consider this my solemn pledge. I will not only wipe Konoha off the map with Sasuke as the catalyst for Konoha's destruction but I will also exterminate your organization and I will crush the remnant of the Uchiha clan Itachi will die as will Sasuke and you end of flashback flashback house of sovereigns council chambers the emperor and empress consort of the western empire sat in their chairs as the Jinchuriki stood before them following the deaths of both Sasori and Daidara and Suna it was made clear that an Akatsuki invasion of Suna was imminent with only 72 hours to prepare for the impending invasion of Suna Naruto had to work fast Naruto had already mobilized four battalions of the Imperial Defense Force and they were primed and ready the Inoshika Cho Trio and Cell 9 were also summoned and ready to enter into the fray Naruto looked at the Jinchuriki assembled to him they were the closest thing he had as siblings given their connection to being bijou containers in less than three days Gara and Suno will be attacked by the Akatsuki with the exception of Sasori and Daidara who have been killed by Anadagara and myself the Entire gang from Itachi Uchiha to Conan and the Six Paths are coming to play even worse they are backed by 100,000 white zets of clones what does this have to do with us Han grumbled I plan on going to war against the Akatsuki Naruto continued I plan on wiping them out once and for all the reason why all of you are here is that I am asking you to come with me to Suna given your past problems with the Akatsuki in regards to your bijou I'd figure that you would want some payback if you refuse then. I will not hold it against you and you will be free to leave the Jinchuriki looked at one another conversing with each other for a moment Yujito was the first to speak I've fought alongside you and Inada for a long time as long as I can bring my Hellcats to the party I'm in granted Naruto confirmed ah what the hell Yudakata said shrugging his shoulders I'll come as well same here Fu seconded will take these punks to the painkiller be wrapped causing the others to sweat drop show on that the 
West plays no games you did save both Han and myself from the Akatsuki Rashi said for that we owe you big I'm game Han nodded his consent payback sounds good real good count me in and you Kurama Naruto asked the redheaded woman shrugged her shoulders no need to ask me that question kid Abito and I have some unfinished business so long as you don't kill him Naruto said just beat him within an inch of his life I want him alive enough so I can take his head myself and a flashback.